All right, Reggie, we're on live right now. I sent you the chat to your email. You might not be able to see it for a minute or two, but whenever you get it pulled up, um, or if you get it on your TV, just let me know. Carson on here in, in a few when when Reggie's all set up that will be interesting to hear that conversation static sound let me try to adjust the mic still static sound lots of static okay. hey Joe you gotta send me that chat again too when you get a chance I emailed it to you okay it, it's not working okay I mean, I can't send a different link. It's the only link I have. Hold on, I'll try it again. Let me see. I think I got to go to like the live one and then let me try to get the static. Okay. The static clear now? Let me just make sure I think we're good. Uncle Murder, black and yellow. I don't believe the stuff about Shug saying. I appreciate that. Um, all that stuff we will address. I assure you guys it's, it's lies. But we'll address it. Okay, we're good now. We're clear now. All right. <clears throat> the Shook stuff we'll address on Vlad and we'll address on Bomb first. But tonight we'll just address Reggie and Phil Carson. Um, let me try to get you this chat, Reggie, so you can um, okay. see what's going on. Sorry about that. Um, this is why we don't live stream that much, <laughs> especially on a, on, a, on a weekday. But we were both busy today, huh, Reggie? Yeah, it was a big, busy day, busy day. Busy thing to be here. Okay, let me pop out this chat, send you the link. All right. Um, I'll send it now, Reggie. Let me just title it something different here. Chat link. And then you'll, I, I, think, I think it'll be best, Reggie, if you call Phil, uh, you know, and then patch him in on your end. I know you okay. sent me his contact, but I think it'll... I will. I okay. will. I will cool. wait until a couple people get here. Of course, of course. Until you get the... Yeah. I want you to get the chat up, too. That way you can uh, yeah. Yeah. see what's going on. I haven't, I haven't got the email yet, but okay. I'll wait. I just sent it, so you should probably have it in, like... Give it, like, five seconds, ten seconds, and then you should have it. <clears throat> so... Is, it, is everything um, uh, good audio-wise, people in the chat? You, is there anything weird or anything before we get started? East Tennessee, triple 73rd. Okay. Mm. He's not concerned about the chat. He wants to be able to read it so he can respond to you guys' questions. Did that email come in, Rich? Yeah, it's telling me I got to subscribe to something called live chat or something. Oh, you're not. Oh, oh uh, let me change the settings. Let me see if I can change that. It's all the same now. I think I have it set to where if you can only live chat if you're subscribed to us because it cuts oh, down on the bullshit, you know? Oh. Uh, well, hold on, let me see if I can adjust. Oh, that. no, don't do that, Chris. Okay. <laughs> we, need, we need the bullshitters there, too. Yeah, yeah. We need all of the lives. Stream settings. Okay, let me just find where it is. I'm going to subscribe to the channel, so I shouldn't. Yeah, sure. Unless, you on, unless you go on the back channel, so. No, 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 it's the regular channel. Oh, okay. I'll subscribe to the channel, so. Let me edit this. Customization. Oh. Okay, anyone. All right. Um, try to go to that link now, and it should. The same link, or you said a new one? No, not the same link. Okay. <laughs> Hostage, um, people ran with it saying that Phil Carson said Reggie was an informant, but he, he, they'll clear it up. 
it wasn't like that. Just the people that dislike Reggie took a little sentence and ran with it and insinuated there was something that wasn't. But... Yeah, I'm almost snitch. I snitched and never got anybody in jail. <laughs> Somebody to say that Reggie Wright testified against them, then, then we'll talk. No, that's not working, John, so. It's still not working? Okay, let me send it to you again. Hold on. Let me look at the link that I sent you. Send. It's something, uh, it's, it's something. Are you doing it on your phone or are you doing it on the TV? Because when I click the link uh, that I sent you, it loads well, the chat immediately. Well, you know, we did this for years, so you know I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me send it again. Send it again. Okay. We're going to bore all these people to sleep. I uh, know. <laughs> they don't go there. They don't worry about this. No, no, no. I'll, I'll send it. This should work. Try this one. If it doesn't work, then fuck it. We'll move on. <sighs> At least we ain't making them list to all whack ass rap rap songs like some people do. That's true. <sighs> let me know if that one works or doesn't work. I'll let you know so it's coming. Go ahead and talk to the people, shout their names out, they love it. Let me see, let's see who's all in here. Central Cow. Um, yeah, we're going to address what Suge said, um, this weekend. Uh, James Robinson, I appreciate you coming in. Oh, uh, I, I understand what you're saying, uh, Leroy, where you were talking to the Skull guy, I get that. Um, let's see, Mogul Giant, he said, hashtag Reggie MF, right? <laughs> they're coming. They call him, they're calling Reggie, uh, Nostradamus now, because he predicts the future. <laughs> um, let's see. Jeremy Hamilton. I wish. I'll do some goddamn lotto numbers. I, I need know. Lotto. The 1.3 billion that somebody got in New, in New Jersey. I saw one, a single ticket sold for the 1.3 okay. billion. This, this is what it shows. This is what you know in the future, John. This is what it's saying. Okay. But it, we're going to go to, uh, this won't deal with the chat. Uh, it's sending you to a live chat channel? Yeah. It's so something wrong with your phone then. Okay. Open it yeah, not in YouTube. Open it in um, your browser. Copy and paste the link to your. Uh, I, I don't. I'm opening it on my own from the email. I know, but you're sending me screenshots from I'm YouTube. I'm just showing you that's what it goes to when I open it when I hit it. Okay. That's what it sends me to. Okay. I hit the. Actually, down there, send it to. Anyway, it's cool. Never buying Android people. I've been doing chats for years on Android. And go look at the links, and it's the same link. Don't worry. Just copy and paste it to your browser one time. We deal with that there. Okay. You want to get Phil Carson on, or you want to talk? I want to see what who's here. Let me see. It's 160 people here. I want to bring him on. Okay, 160 people here. All right. Well, if you can't do interact it. with them, though, we won't get it. it won't. Uh, I'm very sorry. I, I can see the name. I just have to go on a regular channel. Like. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let's see. Uh, Reggie Field is back. You in a corner with the facts. Just pretend you can't hear him over the static. <laughs> I am ready. Yeah. I was sick that day, but me and Phil, me and Phil is cool. Me and Phil don't have no problems. Oh man, y'all need to go live more often. Shit, John don't know how to work this shit. <laughs> I can I can't see the chat fine. <laughs> <laughs> Justice for Biggie, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have the Phil fans yeah, in here. So yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about it and uh I'm sure they're talking about it in heaven, the two of them. What up, Red and John? I hope all is well with you guys. Appreciate you. Yeah. All right, well, John, you go ahead and start talking to people. We're okay. trying to talk to people and get them on. Okay. Coach him on what to say and what not to say. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, let's see. How many of you guys think Diddy's actually going to get an arrest warrant made for him? You think they found anything in those houses when they took the uh, computers and phones and all that? Very reminiscent of uh, the, the um, KPD stuff, but... Jimmy Henchman been wrong. Okay, yeah, yep. I saw the, the, the Puffy... I, I can't believe they described the dude as a mule who takes his, his illegal stuff state to state. That's crazy. 
Um, did mom embrace Tupac because he always screamed their name? Paul, I, I wouldn't know, but I can only say that Trey has said that they did. So I, I would say he would. He will be arrested by next week. Okay, John, I got Phil on the phone. You can just, there's a long way try to get his partner, Don, on right quick. Hold on. Uh, mm. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. I heard you had a, had a, had a um, spontaneous bump into Reggie in, in the real world. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. It but is. Said, Hold that second, man. I know this guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, totally unexpected. It was, uh, it actually was pretty cool just to be able to, all right, I think I, I think I made it happen, you know, I got everybody on the phone. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so, John, I'll take over for a minute, just for a minute, then I'll let you go. Go, no, go. Chat, so. go for it. So, gentlemen, 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 this is the people, uh, three parts of the crew of the dossier, and my girl, the only one, the reason I like any one of them, she's not with them, but the lady behind the scenes, their girl, Nikki, uh, uh, she's also the producer, I guess I'll call her of the show. And uh, we have on the phone uh, Phil Carson, the guy that uh, y'all know that all of y'all call me at 137 of. <laughs> and my boy, uh, and my boy Don, uh, who likes to hang out with people that only get uh, 1,500 uh, subscribers. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow, that's a fantastic oh, intro, Reggie. <laughs> hey, everybody know you, most of the people that's over here, especially the ones that tune in, because we announced a few hours ago that y'all be on the show, they um, they over here. And so most of them know you already. So like I said, these gentlemen have a, uh, a podcast out called The Dossier. Uh, they completed season two, and I'm sure they'll be doing season three. And I'll let my boy Don tell y'all that. And, uh, and then we'll go into some stuff. The main reason I want to go into all of this is, of course, I want to we'll go ahead and address a few things, let you guys ask some questions. Uh, and then, uh, and, uh, um, but more importantly, uh, I wanted to pick Phil's head because I know he's a, a FBI agent, a trained FBI agent on just what he can tell us on the procedures or what he thinks going on with Mr. Diddy currently. I know everybody want to talk about the Biggie stuff and all of that. And whatever Bill and Don want to talk about that, we'll do as well. But my main thing right now is pick a, a guy that I know that knows this stuff, pick his head. And so, uh, Bill, if you can, I don't know, because I'm, I'm telling y'all, me and Bill only talk by text. And we haven't prepared. We haven't talked. <laughs> I just called him and you know, I haven't even called him on the phone. We bumped into each other about three or four weeks ago, and and, we, and he said, hey, Reg, call me when you want to do something. Yeah. And I saw all of the stuff that's going on with uh, with Biggie. Not Biggie, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. with, with Diddy. And I was like, you know what, the, per the perfect person, still all of us YouTube lawyers and YouTube experts and stuff like that, be Phil Carson, <laughs> and that's no, okay. I, I, I appreciated the fact that you came and did our uh, our podcast. That you know what, the least that Don and I can do is reciprocate it back. So happy to be here. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, and yeah. Don. I'll let Don go ahead and talk to him. I know he's your 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 lead guy, like John, my lead guy, and I let him set up whatever he want to <laughs> set up and promote, and then we'll get to going. And well, I, I don't, I don't have anything to promote, but I, I do appreciate you having, you know, Phil and I on to talk. I think um, for me, you know, and and for people that follow, I guess you guys, and then who listen to the podcast, you know, I, I will say one thing is that the ability of us to tell. The story that we did on the podcast was because of, of Phil's work. And more importantly, I think it's also about Phil's track record at the FBI and, and what he's done in, in his career. You know, so I, I think for me, what's important is, as, as we all know, online and on various outlets, there's various conspiracy theories and various assumptions and and what i think i've realized and i know about phil and in, in his work is is that nothing that he says um 
he will not back up and, and nothing that he says is not the absolute truth. And, and I think that's um, hard to find in the world we live in today. Um, you must but don't listen to Rick, you're right, huh? You must don't listen to Ricky motherfucking right. <laughs> so so I, I, I just want to say that, and I think... You know, listen, um, the the biggie stuff is the biggie stuff. I think the, uh, an interesting component is what has happened with uh, HSI, Homeland Security Investigation, and secondarily, a Southern District investigation. And for anyone that knows and understands the Southern District, they know it's the Sovereign District and it's the MBA of federal courts. And they don't... Um, just build cases to not follow through on them. So, you know, my speculation at this point, and I'll let Phil talk, is if you have HSI in the Southern District bringing in people to talk, they're building a case. It'll be a big case. Um, I think there'll be a number of charges, and, and, and that'll happen, I think, in the next few months. Okay. So this is, yeah. That was Don that was talking. So that, that Don, Don, tell them your background history, just so people can put the credibility what you're saying and, and all of that. Sure. So, you know, I came out of um, NYU. My very first documentary was a documentary called Rap Sheet, Hip Hop and the Cops, which delved into what is called the, the Hip Hop Police Unit. From there, I was able to do a number of films, one uh, called The Infiltrator, starring Brian Cranston. And John Leguizamo I was also an executive producer of the City of Lies film, which starred Johnny Depp and uh, Forrest Whitaker. But I, I've been able to tell stories, um, you know, in this world, whether it was who shot Biggie and Tupac for Fox, whether it was the Supreme Team story. Oh, I don't know you that for that. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, with Nas. Um, so I, I've been fortunate and lucky to live you know, in, in the world of, of crime and, and gangsters and, and law enforcement. Um, but, but I will say, in closing, before Phil talks, you know, for me, what, what I'm proud about the, the, the podcast that we did is, is we were able to tell, I think, a very important story. And it was a story that no one had any say as to what went into it, but Phil and myself. And um, that's rare in, in the world of television and film where you have 30 people working on something, but that really was a, a labor of Phil's story and, and, and us being able to tell it the way we wanted to tell it. What was your conclusion? I'm sorry, I'll be honest. I hated you guys so much until a few <laughs> weeks ago that I didn't even listen to it. <laughs> I didn't even listen to uh, the season two. I listened to some of season one, of course, but I didn't listen to season two. What was your final outcome? Could you just tell us some bulletin points from that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think the, the bottom line here is that it's obvious for many reasons that the LAPD hmm. has engaged in a in a cover up of of the of the murder of Biggie. Hmm. It's obvious that um, LAPD officers were in, involved in in that crime, um, and I think the the conclusion is not my conclusion. The conclusion is the work of Phil Carson, who was a decorated FBI agent. It's the work of Sergio Robledo, who was an LAPD homicide detective and then was a private investigator who, if you speak to people at the LAPD, has a pristine reputation. It was Richard Valdemar, who also has a pristine reputation. And I know you guys at certain points have a bad mouth Russ Poole. But at the end of the day, if you really look at what Russ Poole did and his track record, as a as a as an investigator, you know, for me, I, listen. And I no. think that's something that you like to uh, to say and throw out. <laughs> but I have always said, is Russell who was like a mouth problem, in my opinion. He got the ultimate in right, but you know how when we used to, have to do uh, arithmetic in school, and the teachers used to give us an F, even though we get, came to the conclusion, if we didn't do the the math right. 
meaning this, we didn't do the steps right in, in between to get to the end, you got it wrong. Well, that's he wasn't allowed. He wasn't. Let's be clear. That's the only thing I ever said bad about Russell is all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he was yeah. not allowed to do his job. And, 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 and I think, you know, I'll let Phil talk now, but I think there was a semblance of, you know, Phil not being able to do some of his job also, right? So I'll let Phil speak about, you know, how he feels uh, in, in summary about, and can we about this. Speak, yeah, before we go into this, because I didn't really want to make this – I mean, of course, we got to deal with the biggie thing when I get a Phil and a Don on the phone. But I really want to get Phil pick on, because this is this is a hot topic right now. And this for the people that's here, just to get his pick on. And I, and I heard your your side about the Diddy thing and what you believe. This would, and maybe I have to ask, throw the softballs to, to, to Phil so he can maybe talk about it. But just what he knows and what he thinks from his experience. The main question is why he thinks Homeland Security was involved versus an FBI agent department or ATF or DEA or just New York PD or whatever. If he can explain to the people why, why would they go to Homeland Security versus just the FBI handling it, just the ATF handling it, or just the DEA handling it? Well, you know, first so of all, right yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Um, well, first of all, um, HSI, uh, they're not, they don't have, they, I guess they, you could say that they have the same jurisdiction as the FBI in terms of all the statute that they can investigate, um, but they don't. The FBI okay. has a broad range of everything that we do, and a lot of times, ever since um, 9-11 happened, a lot of the criminal agents of the FBI were reassigned to all the domestic terrorism and um, international terrorism squads because terrorism is the number one priority um, of the FBI in, in the U.S. So a lot of these task forces, the FBI still may be part of, but they don't necessarily have the bodies there that they used to have because they're spread out in so many different areas. This is one of the areas of concentration of HSI, which would be the whole human trafficking thing, the sex trafficking okay. and things like that. Gotcha. So that's, that kind of explains that. This case originated out of New York, and then when they were ready to execute these search warrants, they sent leads down to Miami and out here to Los Angeles, and then they had HSI agents out here um, help execute those search warrants, just as just for background. Um, but nothing has been made public about what was in those, uh, you know, what the probable cause was to think that, in, in case people are wondering, if you, want to, if you want to conduct a search warrant at, say, a residence, you've got to show probable cause in an affidavit that you believe that there's going to be evidence to the crime is going to be located in that residence. You can't just say, um, you know, I think, uh, I think Puff Daddy is involved in, this, in these, you know, sex crimes and drug trafficking, and therefore, you know what, we're just going to go ahead and execute a search warrant at his house. You have to show probable cause in an affidavit and have a judge sign off on it where you show specifically you believe that evidence to this crime is going to be located at that location. Such as if you don't put in an affidavit that you want to search, say, a back shed or you want to search uh, a car parked in the driveway, you have to put those specific locations and say why possibly the evidence could be located there as well. Just, just as kind of like a background. But from there, I mean, honestly, Reggie, there's there is nothing out there that shows specifically, um, you know, what what the probable cause was specifically um, that they were going off of that was in that that were in those two locations. I know they got I, I I've probably seen the same stuff that a lot of people see. They tore those places apart. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and okay. I mean, tore them apart. Man. And one of the things that. I mean, so you I think they were looking for maybe evidence that cameras were somewhere. Oh, they, they took they they took every electronic, every every computer, oh, every the, other, yeah, the the hidden ones. You know, I think that's what they mainly wanted to to prove what people were saying. How you have all the hidden cameras in the yeah place. yeah. I heard that people yeah there were there were there were some rumors that people said that he had cameras in every single room. Oh yeah, they they tore this these places apart. What's interesting though is is usually. Um, when the FBI conducts a search warrant, especially on a residence, once we once we hit the place and then we bring everybody out and we secure the location, 
the first people that go in are the camera people and the sketch people. So they go ahead and they put up like numbers in each room or letters of the alphabet. And then somebody will go through and take pictures and then somebody will log in like, okay, room one, um, section A is a closet and they have that in a log and they're taking pictures. And that takes some time because you've got to go through the entire location, in this case, mansions, and identify every single room, take pictures. Because one of the big things is, is you want to try to leave the place somewhat intact, just like you found it. Okay. At the same time, you don't want to, you're not going to just, or... yeah, you don't want to miss anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But just from the pictures that I've seen, and this is just on, you know, on TV, they tore these places apart and they left them a mess. So I don't know what they got. I'm assuming, I mean, I know they took a lot of stuff. They were showing them hauling out boxes and boxes. As well. yeah. yeah, but in terms of what was taken, they are talking about all the electronics, cameras, tablets. Um, I'm sure they went through all any type of files, paperwork. And what usually happens is, is they get all that information, all the documents, everything they take out. Then they'll have a team go through, um, to basically pull out if they find anything that has to do with like an attorney client privilege, what they call like a dirty team. And that's somebody that's not associated with the case. And so they'll go through all the evidence and they'll pick out things that aren't either aren't part of the search or they feel like they should return them or that there's some type of conflict where it's an attorney client privilege. And that's yeah. when, and that's when the agents that, you know, are actually, you know, working the case, yeah, yeah the investigators, the that's when they'll go ahead and look through it. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, other than that, I just, I, all I could do is speak on behalf of what the FBI oh, would the do yeah. of yeah. the past. Um, but this was, this was purely an HSI case. Okay. Um, but you know what? I mean, if you're going to, first of all, the, the, the standard bearer barrier of when you go after, you know, a high profile person, whether it be a Sean Combs, whether it be a pro athlete, whether it be a Senator or a council person, um, you know, or a police chief or anything like that, you, you potentially are going to, can ruin that person's career. Right. Um, and, and, and have some serious kickback because those people are going to have some darn good attorney. You can be sure that Sean Combs has some of the best attorney that this country has to offer mm -hmm. yeah. and, and understanding what's at stake for Sean Combs. I sure hope the, the HSI, and I have no reason to believe that they don't, but they better have all their ducks in order because if they can't convict him, um, the stir that they have caused is going to be irreparable damage to Sean Combs. So I got to believe that they have a pretty good case or they're heading in the right direction. And a lot of times it's tricky because you don't necessarily want to do a search warrant to give somebody the heads up, but at the same time, you don't want to wait too long and possibly lose out on important evidence that you feel is at that location. You want to preserve it before it either gets moved or it gets destroyed. Okay. So hey, you know, could you just explain to the people and, and, and you broke that down very well. Um, if you can explain to the people, because a lot of people have a concerns of why they had uh, his sons, which they call them kids. Once you're 18, you're not a kid no more. <laughs> in, in law, in, you know, in eyes. But everybody keeps saying, why did they have his kids handcuffed for so long? Could you explain to them what what the procedure is and what they and why you think they did it and how you, you normally when the cuffs come on, when the cuffs come off. Uh, as far as procedure or how you would like to generally have a handle of that? Someone like Sean Combs, uh, he not only is going to have a lot of uh, personal security, but they're armed security. Correct. So when, you go, so when you go into a location like that, that's why you go in heavy. You don't know how many people are going to be inside. You don't know how many people are going to have weapons. You don't know how many weapons in full are going to be at that location. So that's why you're going to go in with an overabundance of people. That that goes for any federal agency or any any uh, you know law enforcement department that's going to be hitting a mansion because you know you, you do your homework and you have a good idea of each of the rooms and what's there, but it's so voluminous that when you start bringing people out, it's for everybody's protection. That if they, I totally understand why they would handcuff the people. But once you get them outside and you get them into a secure location, 
for the kids, yeah, I, I would assume and hope that they then took the handcuffs. What will happen sometimes if it's not a real high profile person and it's a way it's not going to be like a huge mansion, a smaller residence is, you know, if you're going after the mother, the father, and there's a couple kids there, you'll find it. You'll find like a couch in the living room. You'll search it to make sure that there's no weapons or anything hidden right there. You'll bring the kids down. You'll give them some blankets, ask them if they need some water or something, try to calm them down because this is a complete shock to them. And then you'll sit them down on the couch and you'll have a couple agents with them or sitting out in the backyard just to kind of take them away from everything. And then other people will try to talk to, you know, the people that you're actually, you know, investigating. In this case, I don't know how many people were inside uh, the Miami mansion or the LA mansion. I can imagine there was a lot of people and amongst those people are going to be armed bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe the ones that we saw. Yeah, to, in fairness, the ones that we pretty much saw just was uh, a couple of young females and uh, uh, his two of his sons. That's, that's all yeah, that I saw. And I sure, but it's, I'm, I'm sure that you know when you first but bring somebody out, of, but they don't know that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And when you first bring somebody out of a of a location like that, um, and especially if, I mean, the alleged crimes, uh, is part of it is sex trafficking. They, I'm sure they don't know. Okay, if there's kids that are inside there, are those are those the kids of Sean Combs? Are they the kids uh, right. Right. of other people? Are they are they possible victims? And oh, if they're victims, if they're victims, and they see the you know the, the police or HSI coming in. You don't know how they're going to react. You don't know what they're going to do. They could be damaged both physically or mentally and right. snap. So for everybody's safety, you know you're going to handcuff them, bring them all out calm everybody down make sure everybody's you know warm and clothed and you know if they need something to drink or whatever and that's when then you would pull sean aside if, the, if he was at the location that you were searching and uh and try to talk to him which i'm sure he probably did i'm sure he probably lawyered up immediately but that's the reason that you're going to handcuff everybody yeah i don't think he was at the house like they there's someone out there and, and i've been going all day had a taping with Vlad today so i've been busy uh, but Oh, uh, I hear, I had heard that he got detained or something at the airport. Uh, yeah, he flew, I think he was, he, I think he flew down to Miami or flew into a Miami airport yeah. on a private jet yeah. and all this was going down. So I don't know where he was. It must have been a uh, separate one because his big one, his golf, he had let a girlfriend or something like that take some of her friends to the Caribbeans, which probably was a scheduled trip. You know what I'm saying? It's right. spring break, spring weekend, so. You know, rich people do that. <laughs> yeah. We don't understand it, but that's what rich people do. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, you're you're also and also just to kind of let you know, um, you're you're gonna get you're gonna get TV clicks of of showing people being handcuffed and being brought outside of the home. But what okay. they probably aren't going to show is once you bring everybody out in handcuffs, which every it's everybody's protocol, it's for everybody's safety. But as soon as you bring them outside, you calm them down. Um, like I said, you sit them down in a comfortable spot and for their kids. I'm sure that they took the handcuffs off. I mean, there's no doubt they would do that, but yeah. I don't think that's something that they're, they're necessarily showing on TV. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, my boy, um, said that there's no evidence that DD was detained. He was just pacing at the airport and TLC yeah. just got that. Okay. So that's, that's that, uh, for those of y'all that wanted to, you know, we just try to give y'all information on current events that's going on and i think phil did a great job before we get into the reggie and the phil and reggie van phil snitch <laughs> and all of that and and all of this we'll uh, try to take some more decent and uh, mature questions from phil while we got somebody that really knows this stuff or don uh we like to deal with them and ask them questions and then we can deal with all you you trolls. <laughs> you, you know what? I want, let, me, let me, I want to clear one thing up though really quickly. I actually call okay. things up real simple. Okay. First of all, Russ Poole was a 137 confidential informant of mine at the FBI. Okay. Without question. Okay. I can speak about that because he's no longer with us. He passed away okay. like 2015. It's yes. a standard practice of the FBI. And it's one of the reasons why we oftentimes have very good relationships 
um, with informants and people feel comfortable and safe coming to talk to us and provide information is because back, back in the day, there were two kinds of sources. One was a 270 source. That was a qualification. And that's somebody that has something that they're trying to work off. Let's say, um, you know, I, whatever, I arrested a guy on, uh, on drug trafficking or bank robbery or whatever the case may be. And he now realizes he's up shit Creek and he wants to cooperate and he, and he's willing to testify. That would be a mandatory requirement for him to be opened up as a, as a 270 source. He has to be willing to testify. Okay. That that's somebody that can get disclosed to the court and we will put him up on a witness stand. If, if we have to have him testify in a trial, the other kind of source is what they call a 137. That is somebody that we will not disclose. We would not disclose that to a judge. And we keep that very private and don't use their name in reports. Um, but we basically, we, we treat them the same in terms of when we get information from them, you know, we do our due diligence, we corroborate things because you never know if somebody's trying to cooperate just to kind of hurt a competitor or another company or get back at somebody. But Russ Pool is a 137. Now, I can't say anything about you, Reggie, because I, I, I respect you and I respected the relationship that we had. But if you want to explain to the people if you had any type of relationship with the FBI, that's going to be on you. And I can either agree or disagree. Okay, and I'll explain it. The only okay. FBI agent that I ever remember meeting with was a gentleman by the name of Dan McMullen. And that was in 90... Seven or and, uh, well, about yeah, about ninety six or ninety seven. Him right. and John uh, and, and, and yeah. Yeah, they were partners, and that and was who, who else? Who else? Who else and, did you say? And, and, well, I said uh, John. Uh, he was an ATF yeah. agent. Okay. What uh, yeah. what other have you ever had any other type of yeah. relationship with the FBI? With one other gentleman, and I think his name was LJ, and that's when I brought uh, a lady friend of Shug Knights, I'll say that, down to meet with uh, with him regarding some activity that's going on in Vegas at the nightclub. Okay. Do you and mind he, if I if I tell your audience my relationship with LJ Conley? Okay. Go ahead. Are, are you cool with that? Yeah. You said y'all were partners. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We were, we were partners. Okay. Now, are you cool I, with me talking about any type of of uh, what, what you're just speaking about right now, about sure. meeting sure. with LJ? You, okay, yeah. I just want to make sure you're cool okay. with that. Yeah. Okay, I have met you several times. I was always with LJ. We were okay. partners. Um, and when you say several we, times, we were, how many times, and where was that at? Was that the LBI? And that was... No, no it was in different areas of conflict. I've, I've met your father. I, we, we, we you have met father. my father, but I have never oh, met with you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. You have met with me. It is documented. Um, you were very helpful, very uh, cooperating. You provided a lot of good information. We did several different um, operations, including I think we even talked about it uh, a few weeks ago about the information you, that you provided that you said over something to Vegas. About, you said something, not the biggest thing. Because you said something about a raid where Suge Knight got arrested or uh, that's got something separate. That's something totally separate. Well, 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 what about. other operation then? Well, tell that's me about the operation. operation. The information okay. you provide. Go ahead. I'm, I I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, no, no, here's the thing. thing. Reg, I, Reg, you got to be. Only other time I met with LJ was about some school fires. Okay. I See, remember this way. I mean, that's not, I don't think we want to go down. Right? We do. We want to go down yeah. that road. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go down? Uh, yeah. We do want to go okay. down that road. I want to go because I want to hear okay. where you took because I almost got some amnesia or something or you got me mixed up with somebody else. I'm not. No, honest to God, I'm not. And, and you know, please. okay. Please. You, provided in, you provided information and we, we follow people. <laughs> they took us to Vegas. You provide us information regarding, um, God, what was his name? Percy? Uh, I'm trying to think if that was his first name or last name about some uh, contracts that were going on in Compton because no, it's no, you here. Oh, Mark Belly, that's what the school fires. Okay. The school fires. Well, I'm going to finish, Reggie, and then you talk. Getting, we're, 
We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, um, but we, we met, we met. Mayor Omar Bradley. Correct. 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 Okay. Well, I tell you, I tell my my stuff when I when um when he tried to hire or give some money for a, 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 a security contract regarding uh, school fires and was going to try to set up a, a guy that had sued me that I was trying to uh, get his name was Leo, Leo something. And they were trying to get me uh, to bribe or to give them some kickback, Omar Bradley said some kickback for uh, a school contract. And and that's what I'll talk to LJ about. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You're all right. right. Okay. okay. What was the Vegas thing? Was that about the nightclub? Huh? Was the Vegas oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. That was, that was, another infer- that was uh, some other information that we got <clears throat> through Reggie and some other people in Compton that uh, about it, was a big, it was about, well, it involved the same people that were involved in what you're talking about with uh, Mayor Bradley and some okay. of the other players there. Oh. And, uh, and yeah, so we did, we did a nice fun operation and uh it took us to vegas and oh well i don't know what y'all did yeah. from, but i know well, here's I, the thing i mean here's yeah. the thing this is this is the easiest way to explain it is is because this is where i just i i, I want to be careful when, when somebody provides us information whether it be a source or somebody that just is a you know a, a citizen that just feels like they're doing the right thing we don't tell those people like updates or tell them okay oh, well, okay so I'm, we, I'm just saying that's we, all yeah i was trying to yeah, get, we don't, we, we don't, i was yeah, trying to so get omar us. i was trying to get omar locked up he had got rid of the county police department illegally he was out there bashing us and i knew he was dirty and i was trying to get omar locked up you're correct that's correct okay and now the interesting thing is is once somebody like you provides information like that then, then we're good. We go, and we'll still have contact with you. We'll still meet with you just to see if uh, if you have any updated information. Um, just to kind of, you know, when we do file reviews, they don't like to see like huge gaps, months and months in between when we talk with the source because a lot of things can change uh, with that source or with information. But that doesn't mean when we meet with that source. We're telling them, we're giving them updates on, okay, yeah, this is what we did with your information. This is what we found out. This is what we're now doing investigative-wise. These are the new people that we're looking at. We won't do that. No, no agency would do that. But at the same time, we, continue, we did continue to meet with you. I'd probably say I met with you uh, probably five or six times, probably half a dozen yeah, times. Yeah, I bet you were just about Omar Bradley or those school fires. I only remember two or three times. Meeting and recording okay. now. Okay. Well, if, well, I mean, no. isn't this is like a potato <laughs> potato situation? Yeah. It was 20 years ago. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Two, two, three, just, and then the one time I brought uh, re- down regarding the Vegas, that's doing my job. That's the only time I ever met with somebody. Hey, hey, Reggie, I'm, I'm not fighting you over this stuff. We appreciated okay. you offering uh, assistance. And like I said, one of the reasons that I think the FBI is very successful in a lot of it. First of all, we, the FBI or any law enforcement department that does investigations, we do not exist if we cannot make people feel comfortable about talking to us. And the way that you make people feel comfortable about talking to you is that you don't, you don't divulge who they are and you don't talk. I don't, their back. I don't have a problem you know? about that. Yeah. My problem is like I'm over here providing information regarding things that was going on at that pro. That's is what I was, was arguing about. And was saying I was not an informant of, of LJ's or yours regarding anything regarding death row. It was regarding the school fires and uh, getting a contract with the school. And they I, have a, I have that. a quick question. What what were you bringing the girl to the FBI for? You've discussed that on yeah. a live stream, Reggie. Uh, Go ahead. Huh? You've discussed that on a live stream before. I'll tell it. I know. John, I, I, know. I ain't got no problem. I'm not trying to cover up shit. Oh, that, I'm telling the I'm audience not. that, you know, these yeah. aren't new questions. So go ahead. I brought them down because uh, they were doing some, the Vegas politicians out there were, do, were she was questioned about some inappropriate activities that went down for trying to open up the club. And they wanted to know about that. Like and so they would come raiding, raiding her house, 
come into the deal or anything like that, I was contacted by either Mark Anderson, who was a fellow conflict cop, or LJ. I believe I, I met uh, LJ through Mark Anderson, and I um, told him, hey, I will bring her down as head of security for death row and let her explain what happened. Right? Just so, just so, yeah, just so you know, Reggie. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Phil. Is that a record of how it happened? Hello? I'm not... I'm, I'm, oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I was I'm just... Not, I was, I'm not speaking... I, I don't... Reggie, Go ahead. I'm not speaking about this female. Okay, so I don't want not, you to. She's not, she's not on the phone with us. Okay, all right. And okay. again, I'm trying to be respectful of... I got you. Okay, I'm going I'll tell but, you. But one thing, but one thing I will tell you is... Just because you provide information on a particular topic, your involvement in the hip hop industry or the people that you rub shoulders with or the people that you know, if you don't think your name came up on numerous occasion, occasions regarding numerous different things and events regarding the whole death row cases, which were voluminous in, in, in terms of the number of cases, or in terms of my case regarding trying to solve who killed Biggie, then you would be uh -oh, I, I, sadly I, I, misguided. Yeah. Okay, so that's but, what I'm but, saying. But You're, whether I, say I was down there providing information. Yeah, he's trying to just make sure it's clear that he wasn't an informant. That I wasn't down there saying, oh, so and so killed Biggie. So and so did that. I have never I, did that. And we've never said that you did. We never I know, said but that you. Any motherfuckers on this YouTube was there. Okay, well, maybe, maybe these friends of yours that are listening or watching on YouTube or whatever. I mean, Reggie, let's. Well, I mean, what would the fellas in Compton say? They they say would they would they have would speak about the nuances of talking to the FBI? I, I don't know. I, I think people who, you know, are in the business. They're well, in the business. It's a clear no, line. Mark, to be know, fair, that was Reggie's job. To the FBI, no, my job did it. You're talking, deal His with job was to do that, yeah. To deal with law enforcement. That was my job. <laughs> I, I, I was, my job was to, de to deal with the law enforcement. Okay, and that's fine. I think it's fantastic. But, like, to sit here and parse out when you talk to the FBI, when you didn't talk to the FBI, when because, you talk to the because FBI. Because he's showing no, he's not no, an informant of the FBI. It's a difference what? between cooperating uh, with, with bringing people down to talk about stuff and all that, than sitting up there saying, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. How about this, Reg? Why don't you go into a federal prison <laughs> and talk to the guys from the 80s and the 90s who sold drugs and killed people who didn't talk to anybody and ask them whether if you go down and talk to the FBI about anything, what you are uh, uh, copy and that's like, it's, Okay, it's, so you guys have an agenda to paint him as a snitch. Don, Got it. You've been on that. You've been on yeah. that motherfucker. That's why I didn't want him on here, Reggie. Oh, John, John, let me deal with him. Go ahead. You've been on that guy channel and been, been professing that you got information. I don't care about anyone's channel. I'm, I'm that, pointing I'm, here, hear something me out. out. That I'm, a, I'm a snitch or something like that. But now you're saying that I'm doing this in the scope of my job. And it's not like I got on the stand or pointed somebody out. And then you want to make it, oh, a cop shouldn't go and, and, and or head of security of a company, a big corporation, shouldn't go and talk to the police. Oh, hey, Ray, Ray, let, let me step in for a second. I think we're okay. kind of talking over each other. When you, if you, if, and again, you've admitted that you've, you've worked with the FBI, so we're I admit on that. that I have brought, okay. Okay. I, I admit okay. it to, um, okay. Omar Bradley. Okay, but, Go ahead. I, I, understand, I understand this. For every time that you spoke with the FBI, okay. okay we we never told anybody. Nobody ever well, knew. Well, oh, Reggie, I'm Reggie, Reggie, you Reggie, you Reggie, Reggie, take a breath for a second. Okay. We never ever would tell anybody, or d we never did tell anybody that, that you're cooperating or you're providing information or anything like that. Yes, you did. Same, your boy, your boy, your boy, Don, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, choke no hold joke hold channel. Who's who's, I, who's related to you? Who everybody who considers the same? Who's John? Reggie. I don't know who John. I don't know who John Don. Is. I said Don. D O N. Don. I'm talking Don, about Don. Don. 
All, all, all I spoke about is what what transpired when you I'm talked trying, to Phil the first time. Reggie, let me let me let me Reggie, let me clear let me clear this up because I think you got the wrong uh, conception here of, of Don or what what we've said about you. You got to understand something. You might be providing information about Omar Bradley, but Good. you don't know if Omar Bradley is providing information about you. You don't know if the people that are working security for you at Death Row Records, you don't know if they're cooperating either. I, I don't care. Hold on. I am, hold on. Reggie, Reggie, hold on. I am. Reggie, Reggie, hold on. They have talked against me and talk, talk and try to say stuff about me. That don't mean it's true. Can right? I finish? Can I finish? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. We so, Reggie's not sick he, right now, full of COVID right now. So no, he, I know. You're, yeah. No, I like it. I like it when you're fired up like that. <laughs> Um, but no, here, we don't tell people who's cooperating with us, which means if you provide us information, we don't tell people just like if other people provide information to us about you, we don't tell you. Doesn't mean that we believe everything. We would never, sure. ever run. We would always corroborate things or we would, we get other, you know, independent sources to corroborate things. That's like, that's like one of the big things, not to, to divert over to the biggie thing, but that's one of the big things is it's not like you have one person or two people providing information on who was involved or who covered up or who did this or who did that. But when you have multiple, multiple people, and in this case, forget about talking about the biggie, let's just talk about your situation at Death Row Records. Okay. If you think, if you think for a second that you are the only person at Death Row Records that was providing information to the FBI. Man, man, oh, we know that's right. right. You would, you would <laughs> be man, crazy. Man, hold on, it, hold on. Man, no, right. yeah, no, it does. It does. Yeah. Because, the informa- because the information that people provide, we go out and we independently corroborate it, and we do operations, or we do undercover meets and things like that. We wire people up. So I don't want you to think for a second that – you know, somebody tells us one thing and then we just run with it and, and they tell us like, yeah, you know what, uh, you know, Reggie's involved in this, that, and the other. We don't just run with that, but we'll corroborate it. Because we want I'm to find out about what, what the FBI did. And, I'm not talking about what the FBI did and or what Reggie did in 1997, 1998, 1999. I'm talking about what Don is going over there in 2024 well how about this reggie i'm oh, yeah. sorry whatever i said on choke no choke oh, it, 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 this i'm is just boring. trying to prove that it's, this it, is, it's not this factual is, a this, snitch is somebody that's working within an organ, organization and for going back to providing information not telling should night hey man i'm taking your girl down there we're going to talk because these motherfuckers want to talk to us about x y or z that's not a snitch. Let's, we, let's, yeah, let's, no, let's, this, let's, this, this to me about. is boring. I, I think you can right, ask any gangster. You guys what, because what? killing our narrative. Oh, no, I mean, listen, listen no. That, why whether, did Biggie's mom yeah. drop the case? I'm curious what you guys' perspective on why Biggie's mom dropped the lawsuit. There was a, there was, mom wasn't that dropped that? the lawsuit. Yeah, oh, it was, yeah. Did you just say the mom didn't drop the lawsuit? Why she did not pursue it a second time? Why did he pursue it a second time? Correct. That's a question for Perry Sanders. Correct. But that's what he meant. That's what he meant. That's why all. Did she that's all. Didn't she not, that's all. That's all. And, 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 and one more, one more question, real quick. Um, uh, sure. a, a user asked. Um, it's Alex Alonzo from Street TV. He asked, "Ask Phil Carson about his relationship with Black Special Agent Wade Lee and his undercover work in Compton." <laughs> Uh, street, another YouTuber. Yeah, Street TV. It's YouTube channel. Yeah, you have a big YouTube channel. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it this way because I don't want to speak on behalf of Wade because, yes, I know Wade. Um, Reggie, remember when we were, uh, when I ran into you and uh, Mob James about uh, three, four weeks ago? Correct. Okay. We were there, AV, wait, hold on. Let me tell where because y'all, people like to, so we were at <laughs> ABC Studios in Glendale filming the piece that's about to come out on Nightline. Okay. Okay? So is, is that correct? Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now, do you remember when I was sitting there talking? I, first of all, I had never met Mob James before. I was correct. familiar with who he was, obviously, through the gangster. And, and guess but what? I, guess who you didn't even also recognize? You wouldn't even for sure if it was me, right? I knew it was you. 
Oh, you knew it was me? No, okay. no it was okay. you. I, I, was just, I was just stunned. I hadn't seen you in, in what, 15, yeah. and 15 I was, 20 years. Yeah. And I was yeah. um, in a wheelchair. You were sitting there, you're in a wheelchair and stuff like that, but yeah. no. I mean, I'm the one that came up to you, right? Correct. After and hey, okay. you did Reggie. And okay. Reggie did but anyways, you, but you both anyways, getting, no, anyways, that anyways that getting back to this question, getting back to this question yes. because I find it pretty interesting. Because um, this person that asked a question obviously has more knowledge than 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 what anybody on this call realizes. Correct. Um, remember, remember when I when I walked up to you and I walked up to to Bob James, and one of the things that I asked him, I said, hey. Do you recall the name Wade? And I asked him that. And okay. he just says, no. Okay. Well, he should. And I'm not, and I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at that in terms of, of one of the things that I, that I, I don't know why wanted. street TV, hold on, hold on, hold on. now I know why street TV. Yeah, now I do too. <laughs> and I know now, you know, that's why I was ignoring. One of the things, looking. here's the thing, this, one of the things that I wanted to do and I had mentioned this to Don way early on. And this is when when uh, when Greg Cading was always on. Uh, he was on Gangster Chronicles and Vlad TV and stuff like that. And I said the only way that I would go on Gangster Chronicles if they had the entire crew there, and I would go down the line and I would put each one of those people in a corner and ask them questions and see if they were going to tell the truth or lie in front of their own homeboys. Because I'll tell you what, every one of those guys on Gangster Chronicles has a story, and it's not a story that they want to get out. I'll leave it at that. So for this person to ask, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. You hold on. You talking about Reggie Wright in Gangster Chronicles, or are you talking about the Gangster Chronicles now? Or are you just talking no, about Reggie back James? then? No, I'm talking about back then. Back so you talking about Alex? So you talking about Alex? I'm talking about Reg all those guys. I'm not. I'm. Hey, trust well, me. I'm, Reggie, I'm Reggie, Reggie story. We're told. Is there any more to this Reggie story? That uh, situation? I don't know what happened. Like I said, from the time we met, but the only times I ever talked about anything to Phil or LJ was regarding. Yeah, we, we cleared. We cleared. I that know that, but you got to more questions. Reggie, go back and figure like Reggie, that. Reggie, get no Reggie. Get off this thing about using this just to try to 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 clear your name or promote whatever. I'm letting you know. I'm trying to promote. If you, I don't if, need. If you, I don't need Reggie, 573 Reggie, people in the chat cell for that. I get. First of all, Reggie, get Reggie, first I get this first in, of all, in a half hour. So I don't need this. Okay. First of all, since you brought it up a couple times, let's just speak the truth here, okay? Okay. Over half million. There's a, okay, and I've seen the analytics. I have the data. Over okay. Half million subscribers to the dossier. So every time you try to crack a joke. About saying we only had a thousand, or there are only fifteen hundred people. You know what? That's you know a lie. What? And you know people, let me, let me just leave it. Just I leave, don't let know. That I was go. talking let about. That go. I was talking about your choke, no joke, friend. I don't yeah. know what you get on podcast. Just, I don't know how to read okay, just, okay. podcast. So just, just let why, that go. Oh, why? Why do you care about him so yeah. much? That's so weird. Like well, because I hate people that trolls Reggie right, and then people that go over there and support them, talking about Reggie's an informant. When because Reggie doing that for a motherfucker that don't even know what he's talking about. But we this moved not on from it. We moved on. We're, we, I, we're, I got to take more questions. Okay. All right. Take more. Come on. What's the next? Listen, hey Reggie, I'm apologizing to you. I'm sorry. Let's move on and take more questions. I think this is interesting. We already had one interesting question about that was a hell of a question, by the way. Kudos to that person because they obviously know more. Then, yeah, then, and they hate James, so yeah. that's probably why they asked that Okay, <laughs> there you go. All right, next question. Um, or, um, you got one. How many times, Don? Let me just tell you, when I oh. say trolls, I'm talking about the ones with negative stuff. I don't even have problem with people, a problem with people that ask decent questions. Just to say, the bull crap is what I call... You are, Reg, Reggie, let me throw, no, I'm not throw this to YouTube, one. Brothers. I'm not talking to you two, Don. I'm talking yeah. to you. Let me, let me throw this one thing out there, and then, and then we can move on, okay? Okay. If there, is ever, if there is ever an opportunity where you can get all of the people from the Gangster Chronicles, from the original cast, and you brought them all together, and you brought me and Don in there, you will be guaranteed to see fireworks. 
I promise you, and it will make people uncomfortable. Well, Rick, guy, you only all those, I'm, not, and I'm, just, I'm not trying to shit on Alex Alonzo. I'm not trying to shit on trying, anybody either. I'm not trying to shit on James McDonald. And Reggie is here for whatever okay. you got to say. And I okay. thought we didn't address well, it. Not, we can do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I'll just leave it at that. And and people can read into whatever they want from that. So well, Reggie question. only worried about Reggie right now. <laughs> okay, so, well, that's anybody else want to deal with that? That's Yeah. Yes, that's right. it. I mean, by the way, I, I, I like Mark. Like I like Mark to bring up, Just, Like you told me not to bring up other people into it. They're not here to defend themselves. That's so why I'm not talking, talking about them. You no, don't want to be talking about them. No, I just said if you want, if you want to get some fireworks for your podcast, I don't get need all those no people together. I know what you're doing. I'm sure you're doing just fine. Not, <laughs> I, I haven't said any. I haven't said a word about any of them. Not a word. You just said there'll be fireworks if you get them in a room and corner them. There'll be fireworks, and I guarantee you. But the insinuation—it's the Uh, insinuation, Phil. Let's go. What else? What else? You say we go now. Some questions. Please, okay. Here's one. Please, please, Phil, answer why. Okay, here's one. Something. Um, Please, Phil, answer why Amir and Matt on suit for defamation. Their names has been on Netflix and and cetera stuff. Yeah. Okay. Why they haven't? Well, so, I, yeah. def- defamation. Okay. Why I, I, I didn't understand the question. They, they pretty much saying if they get, if they innocent, why they ain't sue nobody? That's what you want to say. It's a good question. If they are innocent, why aren't they suing people? That's what he's trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Hey, no, it's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't they? It's the perfect question for you. Perfect question. Why would a guy you take a guy to their house in San Diego, meaning a mirror? Not from here. Uh, Michael Mike, you're talking. Yeah. No, he took him to Amir Muhammad's house. Yeah, but we took Sam okay. Mike, which again, which again, again, I can then, just, hold on, hold on, just, hold on, ask the question. Slow down. The reason that we could, I can talk about Psycho Mike. Well, let me ask the question. We don't know what I'm going to ask. People on the, people on the stand don't know what the question is. So can I ask him the question and then you can answer? Sure. Okay. So why would you take him to his house? And he goes and talks to this man that he supposedly know, got you out there, and y'all out there got him wired for sound and all of that. And this guy goes, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Why are you at my door? Calls the police. Calls the police like, hey, some crazy motherfuckers at my door. (laughs) And you guys still believe him, want to make a person like that credible. Okay. Uh, obviously, so, didn't know so, who he was. Okay, so let's see how much let's see how much homework you've done on this. How many times did we send Psycho Mike to meet Amir at his house down in San Diego? Oh no! How many, ta- how many times? How many times know. did we wire him up? Why does it matter? It matters because he's, talk- he's talking because he's talking about one instance. How many times? <laughs> oh my! Did, did we? <laughs> okay, you know, okay, okay, you're not. You're not you're okay, you're you're you okay, I got you. That's fair. Okay. Was this All the right. last time, first time, second time, third time that he called the police saying, who is this guy at my door? That was the third time. The third, was that the last time? Uh, you know what? Just because there's still things that are on, we'll just leave it at that was the third time. Okay. Now, right. now, if you were privy to what was said the first couple times, it would explain maybe why um, Amir reacted the way he did and called the police okay because after those after the police were called they contacted me and i explained to them what the situation is what was going on their interactions that they had with amir do you know that amir ended up leaving that police station didn't want anything more to do with any of this didn't want his name used in any reports didn't want to file a report and stormed out of there now, hey, is, that the same gentleman, is that the same gentleman that ran across the, the middle of the freeway after the deposition or is that someone different? No, no, no. I'm talking about I'm talking about the officers that he met with when he went down to San Diego when he was upset when Psycho Mike showed up. Psycho Mike's the guy that ran across the freeway when he was exactly. in the deposition. Yeah. Why did he yeah, do that? We're talk- you're- and I'm not being a smartass. I'm curious why, why no, from your no, perspective, why he ran. Yeah, I, I can crazy. answer that question. You know, I he's can crazy. answer that question. Okay. Go he ahead. told Sergio Robledo that he was terrified of members of the LAPD and 
And when he was dealing with Sergio, he got nervous. He saw he thought he saw members or someone from the LAPD, and that's when he ran. Now, listen, we can parse Psycho Mike. I'll let Phil speak to his character. There was other people that spoke to his character, mainly Richard Valdemar and 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 Sergio Robledo. And I want to be clear with something. You know, it, it, it's funny to me that people go on the internet and say all of this shit, right? Yet you have men who worked 30 years inside law enforcement agencies that provided information, okay, that did cases for 20 years, 30 years in Los Angeles, in Compton, everywhere, okay? So don't take my word for it. Take investigators that were great who, investigators. Who, 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 Greg Katie? Than you and Russell Poole believe anything that Psycho Mike said. Not you, because you're just a, a journalist. But uh, but Phil and Psycho okay, Mike. I'm going to stop, I'm gonna stop you right no, I'm going to stop you right there, there Reggie, right, Phil? Reggie, Reggie, no, Reggie, Reggie, I'm going to stop to move on. Why did no, you Reggie, listen? no, yeah. Reggie, stop. you got to okay. stop this. To be honest with you, it's getting tired. Oh, it's getting on, tired with you no, guys no, taking no, over no, and you guys are the guests. No, 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 no. John, John, hold on a second here. Okay. You guys are go you guys are going after people like Russ Poole. You're going after He was people a psycho. Like Mike, and they're he was a, a psycho. Second. He was. You can't tell me this guy you're didn't not, John, do you know, something listen, wrong. No, 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 we're not calling well, you're not, no, we're not well, going I'm not getting a chance. That's what his nickname was. That's what his nickname is, okay. Psycho Mike. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is these guys aren't around to defend themselves. Oh, okay. I spent, I spent, I spent a lot of time with both of them. Okay. They were both very, very good sources for the FBI. They were. Okay. If they were so good, can I just ask this feeling? I'm not being facetious. I'm really being serious. Why did your agency, the FBI supervision, make you move on? Dare you leave this alone? You spend enough time and money on this investigation. And all, and that, two all, and two, more importantly, that you was there for corruption, not to try to solve the biggest murder case. Exactly. No, I know there's okay. no disagreement to that. Could you, could okay. you explain that? Okay, to first you? of all, first of all, you gotta understand something, Reggie. The FBI works with the US Attorney's Office. Correct. We do the we do the investigation side of things, they do the prosecution side of things. What happened was, is I put together a full prosecutive report, probably a good quarter, three eighths of an inch thick. They had a table of contents, everything, photos, records, everything. I take it down to the U.S. Attorney's office and I say, here you go, take a look at it. What do you think? They took a look at it and said, ah, uh, we don't know. And I said, okay, well, let's sit down and go over it. We go over it. They said, okay, we'll get back to you. And they say, you know what? I'm sorry, we're just, we're going to decline for prosecution. And I'm like, why? Why is that? And they go, well, we just don't think there's anything concrete here enough to move forward for prosecution. I said, okay, fine. So then I go and I sit down with our assistant director, all my bosses, attorneys of the FBI, press information people, and I go through page by page of this prosecutive report that I provided the U.S. Attorney's Office. And our assistant director looks me square in the eye and he goes, Phil, why isn't this case being indicted? And I said, I don't know, Mr. Garcia. You'd have to ask the U.S. Attorney's Office. And he goes, where is their letter of declination? Because every time that you give them a case and they decline it for prosecution, they will give you a letter of declination. And that's to basically cover their ass. And basically, we need that letter of declination to cover our ass because if somewhere down the road, a case like this gets made, people aren't going to come to the FBI and say, hey, why didn't you guys, uh, you know, finish this case or why didn't it get prosecuted? And we could turn around and say, guess what? Here's the letter of declination from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Go ask them. Let them explain why. Because we provided all the relevant information and evidence, and we think it should be indicted. And it's documented. I went down there three different times and met with them. And each time they said, you know what? We just don't think there's enough here. And, okay. and, okay. and the assistant director oh, oh, said, hold on, this, hold on, 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 when you're saying that, you're talking about on the murder of Biggie, or you're talking about for the, uh, for the corruption part? 
Okay. Understand this. They're intertwined. Uh, okay. Murder. Okay. Yeah, understand this, okay? Murder <laughs> is not a federal crime. Correct. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, if a, if, a, if a police officer gets killed or a senator gets killed, that's different because they're in a public position. Yeah. But, but just out on the street, it's not a federal crime. What I was looking at is who was involved in this crime? Who was the gotcha. one? Who were the people that orchestrated this? Well, if you figure out who pulls the trigger, who orchestrated it, and who covered it up, you're probably going to also solve the murder itself. But I didn't open up this case saying like, oh, there's a murder of this hip hop artist. Mm -hmm. I want to go and try to solve it from the information I have. No, that's not the case at all. It is a public corruption case. Um, But we didn't we if we don't get a letter of declination, that's not on the FBI. Gotcha. Okay. So can I ask a question real quick, Reggie? Let me ask a question right quick, John. Sorry. Phil. And then this is Phil. Do you believe Reggie Wright Jr. or Reggie Wright Sr. had anything to do with the murder of Biggie Small? No. Okay. Can I ask a question now? That's all I need to know. No, no. Can I add a little bit? That's a big question. That's a big thing. That that doesn't need to be, that don't need to be just brushed over. So go ahead and then you can elaborate, Phil. Okay. Do I think that you are coming clean with all the information that you have of events that took place and the people that were involved within death row records. And some of those people were involved in law enforcement and were involved in the killing of Biggie. No, I don't think you're providing or you're telling everything that you know. That's now, now that's based but on- my question is, that's, is, I have something to do with it, yes. No. Okay. Did you pull the trigger? No. Oh, Are you in the vicinity? But, no. Ah, Do you have ah. information? Do you have information that is part of the full umbrella or scope of, of the Be- Biggie before investigation? Or after, before or after is what you I do, Then I would say yes. Before or after did I have something to do with the murder of Biggie Small? I would say you have information. Well, before, I mean, once, once the murder is done, it's done. There's nothing after. Well, well you say, well, you say cover up and stuff. When you say it's a, it's a, it's a, that I knew the, about not part the of the cover up. No, I don't think. I don't think you're. No, I no, I know Reg is not part of the cover up because I know who is part of it. Okay. That goes. That's that's indefensible. Yeah. That that goes. That's that's a whole other part of this case that is 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 one hundred percent undeniable of who was involved and how the cover up took place. I know there's idiots out there like Greg Katie who keeps saying about how there's no way this crazy conspiracy theory of uh, Agent Carson and the FBI. No, it is factual, it's documented, and it's indefensible. Well, it's are the documents public, discussion. though? Are the documents public? Because to say are. it's factual, it's that not everybody has Everything, access to what you have. No, er, you know? no every, put it this way. So it's still an open investigation or something. It, it's, 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 I, I could, yeah, here's a, there's a difference between Try, uh, talking about an ongoing investigation versus no. talking about the cover-up gotcha. that 100% took place, and it's indefensible, John. Okay. It's all factual. It's all documented. And for anybody to say, oh, it's impossible for the L.A. Times and LAPD and the DA's office to be in cahoots to try to shut this down, they are 100% wrong, period. Okay. I'm not saying the entire L.A. Times and LAPD... People need to understand something. I do not have a problem with the LAPD. I have a problem with one person in particular. Greg Kenny? I don't have a problem <laughs> with the DA's office. Yeah. I have a problem with a couple people there that, that, that had serious issues that got kicked off this case. I don't have a problem with the LA Times per se. So I have a serious yeah, problem with one particular people, person. 12 or 13 other there. people, 12 or 13 other law enforcement agencies from your agency as well, Jeff, that was on this case, do they believe and concur with what you said, or do they believe and concur with the findings that, that Greg Hayden came up with? Without question, there is not one person, and I've spoken to people on his task force, you can watch these documentaries, the people that have, say, narrated it, there is not one person that believes Greg Hayden, not one. Okay. I, I just have a simple question oh, to John and Reggie. Okay, oh, I have one for you guys too that I've been trying to squeeze in. But go ahead, Don. What, what, 
what exactly do both of you think transpired? Can I answer that, Reggie? Yeah, well, that's easy. We, we told you. Everybody told you. What murder rap findings? I, I'll say this, Don, and this was what I was going to, one of the questions I was going to ask you guys, but um, the, the reason why I believe murder rap's findings over what you guys are saying, and I'm not saying you guys are wrong or you're lying or whatever, because I don't think you're, somebody's washing their hands or doing something crazy, but um, is there's a confession I would love for to get you guys' take on how do you explain Teresa Swan's confession? Oh my God! Just ex- Don, Don, oh and and, and this is for Phil, you know not Don. Like, Don, you have no experience. Insulting. This is for. Yeah, we this don't, is insulting. don't say this is insulting. This is affects somebody's life who has kids. It's not insulting. That's the air bullshit. That's why it's insulting to you. That's why. You know what? You guys are fucking clowns, both no, I told you not to let him on, Reggie. I knew. I just brought you stupid ass on You're a clown and a rat. That's who you are. You're no, a fucking your, rat. Your mama and you called clown. Reggie and begged to be on this channel for the last three months because you guys have no fucking views. And you know that. You and your girl, Nicole. Not Phil. Let me just say this. Not Phil. Not Phil at all. This is strictly for Don and Nicole. I, I can't even say that about Nicole, but Don is a troll. He just trying to pump up his stuff. Bill got other things going on, so he don't need this shit. So I have to explain the confession, no, and he no, hangs no, up. No, 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 slow down, slow okay. down, okay. slow down, slow down. You guys don't need to speak for me. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Well, go ahead. Okay. Because you don't talk like that. You don't call the people names and stuff like that. Clown does. He the one came and became disrespectful because he don't agree. With our feeling, because we believe the murder rack findings, and that kills everything that he's pushing. The only okay. way that he has Reg- income coming in. Reggie, Reggie, yeah. you're 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 a good dude. I like you. I don't have issues with you. I'm telling you right now, you are 100 percent incorrect, and it's factual. About you, you can't say it's there. factual, Don, about, um, um, about, um, Phil. It's not fair to say about, that's factual. About what? Why? Do you let me explain? Let okay, me, please okay, explain. Me, explain. You want, you want me? You want me to explain the cover-up? Sure. Yes, sure. And, 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 and I want you to understand and think about this the whole time. Why would these people be covering up? So let me just go real quickly, then. Okay. And 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 let your audience figure it out. Okay. 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 I'm working an LAPD corruption case. We ended up. It was probably the biggest LAPD corruption case that they've ever had. And I worked it with two different two t- uh, detectives. Um, two of the best guys you'll ever meet, two of the best cops you'll ever meet, Roger Moore and Steve Sambar. They are the best, okay? We get 21 convictions. It involved LAPD officers, LA sheriffs, Long Beach PD. From that case, as well as from me working on the Rampart case and having a good friend of mine working the David Mack robbery case, that's how I came up with looking into this whole Biggie thing. I didn't know who Biggie was. I didn't. Okay. I'm looking at it from a police corruption case. So sure. after doing about, oh, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven months of investigation, I realized it was too voluminous. And so I went ahead and I went to my boss and I said, I really need Sambar and more on this case. They kicked ass on this other police corruption case. Let's go to Burko and see if I can get these two guys on board. We go to Burko, we get them on board. So I get the, I get the other, I get Sambar and, uh, and more up to speed. And one of the first things that we do is we not only pull a ruse, and, we, and this is Bratton and uh, Chief McDonald at the time, who was number two, they pull a ruse where we go ahead and we get to look at the entire murder book, the entire case file of LAPDs regarding the Biggie murder. Nobody knew about it. The only people that knew were Bratton, McDonald, and myself and the, and the two agents and my bosses. Burko didn't even know about it, okay? After that... The three of us, me, Mora, and Sambar, we fly down to St. Charles, Louisiana to meet up with Terry Sanders, Sergio Robleta, and their team, and we have full access to their entire case file. Okay. Now, understand, they have to get the approvals by Burkow to be able to do that. Because he, he, Mora and Sambar, they worked under uh, Burkow at the time. We come back from that, that, uh, that trip. I have to go and, and uh, brief Burko on everything that we find in terms of what evidence is there, what type of witnesses I think we need to look into, um, just a full investigative plan. Mm-hmm. 
right after that, right after I give Chief Burko that full brief, he yanks Mora and Sambar off, and that changes everything. He says that, you know what, we just don't have the resources for this. But that's at the exact same time that Chuck Phillips starts writing articles that drag my name through the mud, drag the FBI's name through the mud, and tries to ruin this case. What year was that? that just, is, so just so I know, because I don't know this uh, stuff. So. Is that like 2000? Probably, probably 2002. Okay. Probably 2002, 2001, maybe something like that. Okay. And this is, this is and by the way, everything I'm telling you guys, and, and then I want your opinion and yeah. your viewers' opinions on if you guys really think this is a cover-up or not, or if I'm just making up a bunch of bullshit. Okay. Everything I'm telling you is factual and documented, okay? So after we get back, and Burko pulls off more in Sambar. That's when the full court press comes on from Chuck Phillips to where he starts, he starts calling me all the time. He's paging me back then. We only had pagers mm -hmm. and I, I ignore all of that. Finally, one day I answer my phone at my desk and it's Chuck Phillips. I had never spoken to Chuck. I'd never met Chuck. Nothing. I had, I had no contact with whatever. And he's saying like, look, I need to sit down with you. I need to go over this case. I want to know what's going on. Because at the time, Chuck Phillips, who was a Pulitzer Prize winning LA Times journalist, has like complete access to Suge Knight, Death Row Records, and he's fully involved in the whole hip hop industry. Okay. And I politely tell, I politely tell Chuck, I can't talk about this stuff. It's not a matter of if I want to, I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed. But what I'll do is I'll put you in contact with uh, an agent who's a supervisor in our press information department, Kathy Beret, and maybe she can kind of, whatever, help you or answer some questions, just basically to kind of pawn him off yeah. and keep him at bay. Like maybe she'll give him Kathy a quote Bray, or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Unbelievable agent, attorney, she does a great job. Okay. Well, finally, Chuck Phillips does write a couple articles. He keeps bothering Kathy to make sure that, look, I'm, this isn't going away. I'm going to sit down with Phil Carson, and I want to know everything that he's doing. And she keeps telling him, that ain't going to happen. It's not allowed. It's not up to Phil. So don't hold this against Phil. Finally, Chuck Phillips says, if he doesn't sit down, if Phil Carson doesn't sit down with me, I'm going to write a front page article and it's going to destroy him. And he even gave kind of a list of, of bullet points of stuff that he was going to say that was completely false, completely wrong. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is, is um, Ray and one of our attorneys goes to the assistant director and say, this is what's going to happen. We probably need to sit down with this guy, Chuck Phillips, to kind of cool his jets a little bit um, and try to get some type of Phillips. resolution. What's that? Rest in peace to Chuck Phillips. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> Phil said, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But go ahead, Phil. So, so they go ahead and they meet with Chuck Phillips late night, like midnight, in the back of a restaurant, like, like something you'd see out of a movie. Right. And they talk to Chuck Phillips and they give me a call. It's probably around 1230, probably pushing one, eight, one o'clock in the morning. He said, well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is we met with Chuck. And the bad news is, is he doesn't give a shit what we have to say. Damn. He wants to sit down with you. And if, and if, he, if you're not going to sit down with him, he's writing this article. Hmm. Now, understand, I got probably another 15, 20 years or whatever of a career. And I'm seeing it all possibly go up in smoke. Just because this guy's got, he's got it out for me, but he's never met with me. He mm -hmm. doesn't know what he's talking about. And I have no say in when I, if I can meet with him or not. Right. So finally, they say, okay, you know what? I, I tell them, I need to meet with Chuck Phillips then. And I, and I told Veray and the attorney, I said, ask the assistant director if I can go meet with Chuck Phillips. And they called him. Again, this is like 1231 in the morning. Yeah. They come back to me and they said, yes. Uh, uh, Assistant Director Garcia said you can meet with him, but but you can't be by yourself. You have to have Ray there. And I'm thinking like, well, yeah, I'm not going to meet with this guy yeah. by myself. Yeah. I don't care if it's in the middle of the day. So I then call the Assistant Director just to verify to make sure. I want to make sure it's cool that I go meet with this guy with with Ray. Everything's fine. I call Chuck Phillips. It's like one in the morning. Doesn't answer his phone. I leave a message for him, mm -hmm. explain who I am. He's been trying to talk to me. I get a call back about 10 minutes later. He said he's in the shower. Didn't expect to ever hear from me. But I said, look, I want an opportunity to sit across from you so you can actually see what the hell you're doing to an agent's career, which is 100% not justified. So let's meet. He goes, tomorrow morning. I said, fine. 
6 a.m., where do you want to meet? We have this, there's a coffee shop right down the street from where the LA Times office was. I pick up Murray, we go and meet with Chuck Phillips. It's real early in the morning. We sit down, probably 10 minutes in, Chuck isn't getting it. He doesn't understand that I cannot talk about specifics of the case. Okay. After about 10 or 15 minutes, I get a phone call from our office. And they're saying like, Phil, what are you doing right now? And I said, I'm sitting down doing an interview with uh, Kathy Beret and with Chuck Phillips. And they go, yeah, we know that because Deputy Chief Mike Burko is on the phone right now with Assistant Director Garcia chewing him a new ass. He's incredibly pissed off that we would go ahead and have a meeting with Chuck Phillips. Now I'm thinking to myself, how the hell does Mike Burko know that I'm meeting with Chuck Phillips right now? Okay. Think about it. We just got, I just got off the phone with this guy five hours ago in the middle of the night. And suddenly now Mike Burko knows about this. And I hand the phone over to Vare and she talks to the press information um, department there. And I look at Chuck Phillips and I'm like, you fucking piece of shit. You told Mike Burko that we're meeting. And, and, and for Chuck people Phillips like me was, who doesn't know, who's, who's Mike Burko? Mike Burko was like, he's, he was like Bratton's right-hand man. Okay. And he, he is who? Circle. From the LAPD? I don't know these people's yeah, he, names. The, oh, I'm sorry. He's, okay. Yeah, he's from the LAPD. Okay. And he's the guy, and he's the guy, Bratton, Bratton is the police chief. I know that he was, the, he was the police chief at that time. I know he, he was, came from New York. I thought it was Parks. Was yeah, the they're, they're, they're good friends. I uh, thought Parks was the chief at the time. It wasn't Parks. No, okay. no. So okay. anyways, Go ahead. so I'm looking at Chuck Phillips and Ray is going off on him. And I'm going like, you piece of shit. You, after I got done talking to you, you called Burko, which basically proved what I've been saying all along because some of these articles that Chuck Phillips had been putting out saying cer certain things were going on uh, mm -hmm. on my case, certain operations, because even though he had pulled Moore and Sambar, his detectives, off the case, I still was required by my department, my office, to give Burko periodic updates on what we were doing. Okay. Burko, in turn, was providing that information to Chuck Phillips, mm -hmm. and Chuck Phillips was printing some of that stuff in the newspaper, such as the Psycho Mike meetings, such as when he talked about uh, the financial analysis and the telephone analysis. What year analysis. are you talking about, Phil? What years that you talking about? Like 2001 or two, right? 2001 or two, somewhere back then. Okay. So I'm looking at Chuck. I'm, I'm looking at Chuck Phillips. I'm going like, you fucking called Burko and told him this, but this is where Burko screwed up and screwed up big time. He snapped. Because he probably was asleep and probably got a message when he woke up and realized what was going on and didn't think about what he was doing. And he called our assistant director and started railing on him about this meeting that was taking place. Which basically, Berkeley just dimed himself out. That he is in contact with Chuck Phillips, which is what I had been saying the whole time, which I had been briefing my bosses. And my bosses were kind of like, half saying yeah but you know what he's our counterpart and mm -hmm. and we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and all that sort of stuff while okay. we're told hold on a second we're told immediately to leave like kill the so, interview go like get kill out of the there. interview okay get the hell out of there gotcha so we start leaving and okay. Chuck phillips is begging me practically pleading saying phil i can explain everything i can explain why i did what i did Rest of that day, Chuck Phillips is just blowing up my pager, trying to get a hold of me. Yeah. At the end of the day, I finally call him. Just because I'm sick and tired of my pager going off from yeah. him. And I said, what do you want? And he goes, Phil, you have to come to my office. It'll explain everything. And I said, okay, you know what? I'll be there first thing tomorrow morning. He goes, great. I go into the LA Times office. I go up to his office, and he plays me three or four secretly recorded phone calls that he made with Deputy Chief Burko. And Deputy Chief Phil, Burko... Phil, but Phil, Park, I just Hold on a second. Burko was chief until 2002. So, I mean... No, Bratton, Bratton was a brand new chief, Reggie. 
And one of the one things year, that you year, wait, uh, hold on, hold, just slow down for a second. I'm just telling you. <laughs> no, just slow, slow this down and listen to the story. Hold on. I'm just slow saying, you said 2001. Reggie, I'm just Reggie, telling you, Quartz, you just shut Reggie, up for just, a second? Yeah, let him finish. Oh, man, I'm shut. not no kid. Don't use the word shut up to me. I'm not no fucking. Well, well, what's it going to take for you to I'm listen not no, to this? I'm just saying, I'm just explaining to you 2002. I'm not no motherfucking inmate. I'm not no suspect or nothing. So don't, don't talk to each other like that. Say shit up and stuff. But I'm just saying, Parks was the chief until 2002. Y'all talking about Brighton in 2001. Brighton wasn't the chief. I just, Reggie, Reggie, I just said, I don't know if it's one or two or three. It's right in that time period. Okay. If All you right. would listen to what I'm saying. Well, if you would listen to what Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. This will answer your question. So you quit asking stupid questions. Oh, I didn't ask nice... the question. I ain't no, the motherfucking things... question. I don't even know what y'all. I don't even care about Chuck Phillips. Oh, I just want to know. What you got involved with here, Reggie? Just won't. You won't listen. Because I don't even care involved. about can the I, Chuck Phillips. Can, can I continue? Ahead. You want me to continue? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of the first things that Bratton did to help me out was he went and told robbery homicide. He wants it. He wants like an update or wants to be able to review any big unsolved crimes, including murders. And that was the ruse that, that uh, Deputy Chief McDonald, who was Bratton's number two at the time, Parks was gone, and McDonald was the one that arranged to have the entire LAPD robbery and homicide file brought into his office so myself and Detective Moore and Stambar that we could look at it. Just like I told you, nobody else knew what was going on, including Burkow. So Bratton was the chief of police at that time. Can, we, can you agree on that then? I don't know if it was 2001 or 2002 or first part of 2003. I don't remember exactly the year. Okay. Are you good, with, are you good with that? I'll just, I'll just correct okay. you. Okay, okay, so you're good with that. Okay, yes, good. Okay. All right, so. Your girl, the reason why I'm going in now because you can keep blowing me up. She, uh, she want to say something, but. No. I'm not, Let me explain no. this. Let me explain the cover up. Okay. So after I listened to these three or four recorded uh, secret phone calls, Urko is saying to, uh, to Chuck Phillips on the phone, you need to ruin Carson. You need to discredit him. You need to ruin this case. You need to write whatever articles you need, but we need to make this thing go away. And I am stunned. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, at uh, Chuck Phillips going like, you have got to be kidding me. And he goes, Phil, there's more. And he starts trying to pull out some photos. And I was, I was, to be honest with you, I was in shock because I didn't expect things to get to this level. You know, I have a lot of respect for, or I did, I should say, for Burke oh. and in law enforcement in general. I just can't oh. believe that that they're that he's pulling this. Okay. And I just said to Chuck Phillips, you know what, Chuck, I'm out of here. Yeah. Bye. And uh, I hold on. I'll, I'll do respect, Phil. I, I got to get to some of the other questions because this is going over a lot of people here because it's even over my head. And I, I mean, don't know the name, so it goes over my head too, because I don't know who a lot of yeah, these people are. To be you, to be fair, Phil. Over our head on this, and, but you know, I just want to get stuff like I just try to clear people's names. Like, do you like DJ Quick? That, that people, explains the cover. But guys, the point that I'm trying okay. to make is go ahead, go ahead. okay. It's undeniable. And if your partner stop calling me, Nikki keep calling me like she. It's, and I and I'm done with the dossier. I'm done with them. I'm done with them. So, Nikki, you listening? Stop calling me. I'm done with you. I'm done with Don. And and and, 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 and then stop, please. please. I'll talk to you after I'm finished with Phil. Thank you. Go ahead, Phil. The reason wait, a minute, dude call, wait a minute, dude called Reggie a rat. And left like, oh. oh. Reggie, yeah, just stop. Put okay, I'll just read, I read a comment. Read the comment. Okay, he was reading the comment, Phil. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The reason that I'm bringing this up is it's undeniable. The relationship that Chuck Phillips had with, with Mike Burko trying to derail and obstruct this case. I want, because obviously for time, whatever constraints and, and, you know, for trying to answer people's questions, mm -hmm. the DA's office, just, just to get to the, the quick point, by the way, I did end up going back and meeting with Chuck Phillips two weeks later. And he did provide all these photos of, of Mac Perez, Martin, Suge, Amir, and um, LAPD officers, all that sort of stuff. Okay, that's all part of the case file. Just to let you guys know. But that's Those never been out, right? Exist. You said together. Those do exist. You said together. Together. No, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that there are a lot of photos that exist that are in case files 
Oh, okay. That, that's that's still exists. Yeah. Okay. Now, so hopefully that resolves anybody's thought that that there wasn't some type of relationship trying to obstruct this case between the LA Times and Burko at LAPD. At the same time, the lead uh, city attorney that was defending this got caught in a lie with me and with the FBI, and it got to a point where that person got removed from the case. DOJ had an attorney working with me. They hired a local attorney for me, and we went to them, and we were going to sue them for defamation because the whole this whole big lie of a ruse that they stated that David Mack reached out to them and wanted to do a polygraph test to show that he had nothing to do with this. Well, they knew for a fact that we were probably working at polygraph David Mack, but they admitted in a deposition, in a sworn deposition, the lead city attorney, that he made this all up. And that David Mack, in a sworn deposition, admitted he never said any of this. That this was all made up by the lead city attorney because they found out that I was on a witness list Mm -hmm. for Perry Sanders. And that if I were to testify, they had at least a 50-50 chance of losing upwards to five, maybe $600 million. Yeah, because of, fact, because of hold on, hold on, Reggie, 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 hold on. I'm talking okay. about the cover-up here. Hold on. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, okay. Paul Piquet, he ends up getting, the lead attorney, he ends up getting taken off the case because of this lie, and he admitted it, that it was a big lie, um, that he made this all up because I had gone to my bosses and said, this is what apparently uh, Paul Piquet just called me and that David Mack wants to do. I go, there's something going on here. This doesn't make sense at all. My boss has said, we're not polygraphing David Mack. And we end up finding out that it was all a big lie just to try to discredit me and all the other things that they were doing behind the scenes to try to discredit me, discredit this case, and discredit the FBI. They get, the lead attorney gets yanked off the case. So that's when I talk about the cover-up of, of between the DA's office, LAPD, and the LA Times, it's not some crazy conspiracy theory. It's all factual. Okay. And that's the part that, that I don't understand when people just go off on saying, oh, how can they be saying this stuff? Well, every, everybody can have their opinion. Why, you know, why is fair. your supervisors not following you and backing you on this if all of this They is are. Fair. They are 100. percent who, who the hell do you think got the attorney through the DOJ and the local attorney? Well, why they why they didn't keep pursuing it? They don't work for the LAPD chief no, or anything. No, no, that's why. Why do you think the lead attorney, lead city attorney, got taken off the case? In fact, Luis Lee, who's a prominent attorney in LA, you talking about the U.S. attorney or you talking about the city attorney? I'm talking about the city attorney. I'm not talking about the U.S. Yeah, attorney. I'm talking about this the is US the city attorney. attorney. No, the U.S. Attorney the US has, no, you're, Reg, you're all confused. The U.S. Attorney has nothing to do with this. The city yeah, attorney yeah, is defending yeah, LAPD. I got no, that. I know no, that. No, The city attorney is defending LAPD. They I got that. I know that. I met with the city attorney on several occasions regarding this because he wanted to see my paperwork and my files showing that the cops never worked for me, which you know and everybody know they never work for Right Way Protective Services. Would you admit you're that? Go, you're going off. You're going off. You're just going I'm going off on off tangents things here. That, that, that needs to be. Clear. You're going off on tangents here. All I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I'm going off on yeah, tangents. Phil, Phil, Phil to be fair, Phil, people you've been talking for the last David seven, Mack, seven, eight minutes. Come on, let's be fair. People work for David Mack. Did DJ Quick have anything to do with the with, with setting up of, of the murder? Did any of your evidence find that? Was Rafael Perez on the scene in kicking shell cases and all of that? Like people have been saying. That's what people want to know from you as an expert, because we've heard Greg Cady's side, and we just want to hear your side, Phil. Yeah. That's all. Don, Don, you want to pipe in and answer that? Don, go. Don, Don hung up. Because yeah, we yeah Don, hung up. Don got... And, and I, I want to say this real quick, Phil. It doesn't be cool to keep calling like, yeah. like she's crazy. Well, 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 Reggie, that's that's why I, I, I think probably the reason Don left is because... Well, he called me a you, you know what? And, and you no, think no, that's no. fair? See, you, you, see, you never listen. You don't, you, all you do, I, you listen don't, I listen very well. I just don't let white men or nobody over talk. Oh. Okay, you know what? Okay, now, okay, you know what, Reggie? Yeah. He's throwing out the race card. I'm not saying that. I'm no. just saying. No. You know, Reggie, okay. Reggie, well, then, you, you, know what? you had an opportunity. I have no problem with you. I I, you were doing video. great. You were but doing you know great what? with answering questions. You know what? But, you don't throw hey. out the race card. I'm sorry, dude. Okay, sorry. we're doing I got, cool. I got to have, have a good day. Have a good motherfucking day. All right. Yeah, that that uh, Nikki girl keeps calling me too, Reggie. Oh, fuck her. Fuck her. Fuck I tried to tell you, know, you this for months. 
Let me keep it real. I ain't got no problem with No, Phil. I have no problem with Phil either. I just hate Phil, because I wanted to ask Phil two Don. questions. Not Phil. Not Phil. I'll keep saying that. But Don and they don't want to answer the questions because we're killing off their shit. I know. I know. But I, I really wanted to ask Don. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Rich. okay. Fuck Don. Don don't know nothing. He's just a motherfucking nerd. I know. reading stuff. I think he knows something. Tell him to go choke the joke and, and get his views over there. It's 15 years. I, and he got so mad. And all I did was ask him, can you, you know, if this is you guys' thing, can you explain Teresa Swan's um, confession? And he, yeah. he, he couldn't, he couldn't do, do it. Anything, they don't want to listen to the truth. But what they I really want to ask to Phil, what I was trying to, trying to jump in and ask him was, um, Nobody hear no goddamn 10 minutes about Chuck Phillips. Well, well, that. well, on, on that point, Everybody knows, yeah, Chuck Phillips, he interviewed Tupac, he interviewed some people, but he also wrote some scathing articles about Death Row when they were going through the, uh, that, uh, when FBI was investigating Death Row and was saying oh, a bunch of bad shit about him, right? That was Janet McMullen and now. Yeah. That was Janet McMullen and LAPD and all that. Okay. But I, what I really wanted to ask Phil, and I've asked you this too, and we've talked about it, but I really wanted to get his point of view was, um, there's so much footage of Tupac and Suge and Death Row and all these people in 95 and 96. There's photos and there's photos of you. Yeah, why is there no photo of David Mack with these guys? He tried to throw that and that's why he tried to confuse. Like they tried I know, to and you cleared it up. Man, we got several pictures in the case files. Out. Yeah. That's why he's trying to say that. But that's why I asked him specifically, but I kept getting cut off. What, were they together? What yeah. pictures? Were they together? Were they yeah. with Suge? And he said no. You know, that's the type of question the motherfuckers want to hear. Yeah. They don't want to hear about. Chuck Phillips and him and all of that. We want to hear, nigga, all the shit they've been saying. The, the, the people have been asking. DJ Quick. People done accuse DJ Quick of having something to do with it. Yeah. People done. Yeah. They said, they, they've even said Theo. Theo and Quick were lookouts or whatever. And they never been saying. But, Reggie, um, can I get a you were right? Because <laughs> I said not, uh -huh. to, not to bring that Don guy on. Well, Don, what the, but that's his partner. Hey, I'll, let, I'll go hide from people. I'm not saying to hide from him. I, I just oh, thought we had a thing like where we were going to talk to Phil. I didn't know it was going to be all political and shit, you know? But. Yeah, sure. Fuck Don's here. Fuck Nico now. And fuck Don. They I told you she was a psycho for the longest. I've never talked to her. Yeah, she hates yeah, him. Fuck and I've never fuck. talked to her in my Phil, life. Phil, I have no problems with fuck those two no phil with phil was great i just he would go on these long um and people on the chat they saw it he would go on these long uh explanations and and yeah you would ask one little thing and you'd be like well slow down he's not gonna control the narrative with me yeah nobody's gonna do that yeah nobody's gonna control the narrative with me this is my reputation my thing everything that's going on I, I admit it to what I've done. That's not an informant. I know stupid motherfuckers don't know that, but that's how you keep motherfucking law enforcement from out of your house. Yeah. Till night knew when I took the person down there and anybody. My whole thing is where the wire and all of that shit, Reggie don't do. Reggie yeah. ain't never did. Yeah. But they but try to insinuate to things to confuse people, and that's the problem. Uh, you know? Yeah. But at least he admitted, hey, you and your dad had nothing to do with Biggie being killed you had nothing to do with you know he thinks you know some information but whatever oh, yeah exactly but what i wanted to ask him was all right well what, what did poochie get paid for what about the confession and then why is there no photos or video convict, ever of david Mack with put, but yeah i'm not trying to convict i'm not trying to work a big and small class yeah. i'm worried about reggie motherfucker <laughs> yeah i'm not worried yeah. about who killed biggie i can't give a fuck who killed biggie yeah is it Reggie Wright killed Biggie? Yeah. Did Reggie Wright have something to do with it beforehand or whatever? And they said That's that. all I care about. Yeah. Anything else is cool. The ones that care and want to know, they should have heard the truth. The ones that's going to troll and always said it, they're going to continue to be that way. Yeah. And I really can give a fuck because their view counts just as much as well. Yeah. But I could care less what a Suge Knight, uh, a, a female, or whoever has done to Biggie Small. Yeah. Or Poochie. They got to deal with that. I only care about Reggie Wright and Reggie Wright Sr. and Jr. Gotcha. Because we're not... Yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not investigators. We're not, <laughs> we're not here to solve some murders, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just... I don't know. I, 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 hey, I still believe the murder app. 
I'm sorry. I got to take a well, confession well, over. You know, that's just my personal opinion. I think people should be able to have their opinion. He doesn't feel that way. You can't, but you can't, you can't come on here and say it's a proven fact. Because if, if we can't see it, it's not a proven fact. You know what I mean? But whatever. All right, what else are you going to talk about? Are you in a bad mood? You want to be done? <laughs> This shit don't bother. It don't change my life no way. I, I don't know I, why it bothers me. Why I even try to address it? Because it ain't shit gonna happen to me. Yeah. Regarding it. So. And I'm sure Don and then we're texting them constantly saying, "Get off the stream. Get off the stream. Get off the stream." No, so Phil was being. You know, I, I hate that I, I, I had to go that route. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me try to get see if I can get a hold of my boy Greg Kings. Okay. Let's see if he can clear up all this shit. I'm sure he was listening. Yeah. So hold on. I just, yeah, and I know Reggie's calling on the other line. I just wish everybody could be cordial and everybody would have equal time to speak without being interrupted. And that goes for everybody that was on the call, except for Don, that guy. What up, man? How guy. you doing? I got you. I merged you in. I didn't. Were you listening to that, that bullshit? Greg? Gregory? I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if he's on. He's the one. Greg? For me. Oh, uh, Gregory, Gregory, <laughs> Gregory. Uh, all right, let me try. Let me try again. Okay, Millie Johnson, uh, ask your question again yeah, in the fuck chat. Fuck you please. too, uh, Nicole. Fuck you. Fuck all of y'all. I told you she was a psycho. I tried to tell you. Hey, Reg. Hey, Greg. Here. What's up? Did you hey, hear our live stream, Greg? What's up? Have you heard our live stream tonight? I just. I'm hearing both of you guys right now. Oh, go Reggie. You go ahead. Go ahead, John. I'll put it on, on mute. You go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, did you hear our live, our live stream with Phil Carson and that Don weirdo tonight? I can still hear Reggie in the background, but um, I just know somebody... Sorry, you cut out, Greg. Reggie, did you mute? By any chance? Because if you did, it would mute Greg too. I muted so you could yeah. hear, maybe Greg knows. Yeah. You you talk to him, Reggie. You, you two talk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some water. You, you two do your thing, Reggie. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna grab Greg, Greg, Greg. All right. How about now? You still hearing two people? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Um. Hey, Reg. Hey. Call. Call. Oh, that is it? I've got two lines going on. Let me call them back. I don't know. Between you and John, I could just hear two people. Okay. Are you good now? Yeah, yeah. What's up? Okay. Man? Good, good. We were just wondering if you were listening to, uh, we just had Phil on. And so I think um, I just wanted to call in. And I was hoping you were listening. I had texted you earlier to tell you to, to, you know, to check in. I didn't want to stand back Hill and, you know, put you on there while he was on there because I didn't get permission to do that. But did you get a chance to listen to any of it? You know, I caught just... It's I, as soon as I tuned in is when there was some kind of bickering going on back and yeah. forth, and you know Phil doesn't. Uh, he it, it seems like he goes on these long, you know, overly detailed explanations where he says a lot without really saying anything, and then when you try to interject anything, you're you know you're being rude. So I don't know what the what the context. You, you must have. Uh, you know why you're here to think that you must have your your YouTube on. But turn uh, your I, volume down on your YouTube. I don't have YouTube on, right? Oh, okay. You don't have it. You're not listening to it. Okay. No. All right. Hey, well, Victoria, you, you the troll. I don't care what you think. Take your bitch ass off of this <laughs> channel because I'm gonna say I don't need Greg to save me. What do I need saving for? Huh? Huh? You stupid bitch. What do I need saving from? What? Tell me. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just had to text my mind to keep, keep, keep on. Um, too late, too late. I hate stupid motherfuckers. Right? The man told y'all, nigga ain't had nothing to do with the murder of Biggie. 
Greg that told y'all that. So this because y'all want to believe stuff, then y'all go ahead and believe it. That's not going to change my life one way. Your belief, your truth, ain't going to change my life. No, uh, no way. I'm sorry, Greg. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. And I, uh... Anyways, I didn't get a chance to really hear more than just a long, overly detailed explanation of things between Burkow and I think uh, uh, Chuck Phillips. But man, you know, if people understand... That's too deep for, that's too deep for the listeners. They don't care about that. That's all I was trying to say. I, I, yeah. I had went away because Nicole kept blowing me up, so I'm trying to talk to her. I love our past respect, but she done blew it with me. Fuck her. She can go eat a dick. <laughs> and, and, and also, uh, Don, he's a real piece of shit. Uh, they'll never get me on the phone again for anything. They can put out anything they want about me because nobody listened to their whack ass shit. No way. So I don't know that's too deep. All people want to know is I'm trying to get them to find out about Rafael Perez. Was he the one? They keep wanting to say Rafael Perez was there kicking over shells and stuff. You done told us it was a different all Perez that was there. You know, I, I wanted they tried to they accused this poor man D Day quick to having something to do with with the murder. Of, of, you know, I'm just trying to get them clear up. He want to talk about this. Is a good question. This is something he brought up. You never mentioned. I want to ask. He said that they went to uh, Amir Muhammad three times, house three times, and talked about it. What is he talking about on that? He didn't want to talk about that. Well, it's all very well detailed. I mean, the whole, um, you know, the whole thing that they tried to do down in Chula Vista uh, with Michael Robinson and Amir Muhammad, it's all very well detailed and chronicled in the, you know, in the case files. It ended up being an absolute, you know, operational fucking disaster. Nothing came from it. And if they claim that something did come from it, put forth that evidence. Give us the recording from the from the body wire that he was allegedly wearing. Where is the recording of that conversation, if it if it exists? And you know, so the thing is, force people to produce evidence when they make claims that this is fact or that's fact. Where is the evidence, other than you presenting it through your own perspective? Show us the documents because. If it's an FBI investigation, if it's an LAP investigation, it's all going to be documented. Show us the fucking reports. Give us the recordings. Give us the evidence that you claim these facts are based on. And nobody demands that. And if you don't get them, then don't accept it as fact. Yeah. And so, and then, you know, I don't know. Um, then he want to neg- you know, not talk about, you know, well, I don't know, there's so much stuff that Phil, like I said, Phil believes what he believes for whatever reason, and I can't knock what Phil, you know, believe in what he thinks, but he don't want to acknowledge that the witnesses that they had were crackpots. Mike, well, Psycho, wit- Mike, go ahead. Yeah, all the witnesses, you know, backpedaled, and either, you know, even were, yeah, even Kevin, you know, where they either believe something and then found out that they, it's most likely untrue, so they backpedal, or they were making it up all along, or they just had a misunderstanding of something. And that was the Achilles heel of the entire lawsuit, was that none of the witnesses were credible or reliable. And so that was why the case fell apart, and that's why David Mack and Amir Mohammed were dismissed from the lawsuits, because Perry Sanders became you know, clearly aware that that case was, they had to keep reinventing it over and over and over. Let's reinvent how to approach this lawsuit. And, you know. Well, John had asked a good question. They tried to flip it and and change it and turn it against him. Well, he just said, why wasn't there a second follow-up lawsuit by the Wallace family? If she didn't, but could you tell them how the conversation went to what made her believe and what drops it? Why she gets on the Breakfast Club and says she believes ninety-seven percent of what you said, uh, or what your findings were? She said that only two or three years ago. If that's what she believed of the murder rap findings, they don't want to answer that. They still want to prove this dossier theory, I guess. Yeah, so it's relatively simple. It's a strategic move because if you 
you know, when these lawsuits are dismissed, they were, they were, they were, or, you know, um, when they are, uh, retracted is probably the better way to kind of define that one, but you, you always keep your opportunities open. And so that if by some miracle down the road, some evidence surfaces and they're able to re pursue the lawsuit, they want to keep those doors open. And so you don't completely slam the door, even though the chances are very remote that you'd ever be able to re, you know, revisit it all, you still keep the doors open. So I don't blame the letter Wallace for that. Um, because she doesn't ultimately know, you know, she's been misled so many times and for such a long time. And so now it's just a matter of her thinking, well, obviously I couldn't prove my lawsuit. And then another theory rises where they have a cooperating co-conspirator who, under a proffer agreement, confesses to being involved, which further undermines the lawsuit or the potential for any future lawsuit. And so she's probably like, what the, you know, this whole thing has to be such a disappointment um, for her. And so I, I don't know if she knows really who to believe. I honestly don't. And because of all the conspiracy theories and all the misinformation, uh, they've allowed, you know, that her whole perspective on the thing to be completely clouded. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I just wanted to get, and I couldn't get it out of him. Why did his supervisors tell him to stop proceeding, pursuing the case? That's the main thing. If they feel like there was some type of corruption or some type of, no bosses of a, a federal agent is going to this let something like that go away when you got to go out the crooked cops. Everybody won't believe cops cover up for each other and all of that. Tell um, he telling them crooked cops hate crooked cops more than they hate crooked politicians. Bad guys. <laughs> yeah. So the the thing is, that it's a true, it's an out, it's a catch twenty two for Phil or for anybody that's on that side of the conspiracy theories. It's a total catch twenty two because for Phil, he's got to say that you know he got shut down and there's political pressure and all this other nonsense. But the fact of the matter is that when you're working for the public corruption unit at the FBI, your whole job, your whole objective, your whole reason to exist is to root out corruption. And so he's going to catch 22 by saying, yeah, my own department, my own unit shut this down, saying that there's not enough evidence to pursue it. And so if there's not enough evidence to pursue it criminally, and we've proven that there's not even enough evidence to pursue it He said he took it to the U.S. attorney three times. <laughs> People missed that. He took it three times. I mean, he tried to get the, the paperwork correct three times, and he kept telling him, no, no, this is U.S. attorneys. Right, and so it's a catch-22 because you're either going to have to say your own unit's corrupt, which I don't think he's willing to say, or he's going to have to admit that there wasn't enough evidence and that what they did was appropriate in shutting it down. And so if he comes up with these excuses, oh, it's political pressure and it was going to, you know, jeopardize relationships, that's all bullshit because the FBI takes down cops from departments all the time. All the time, love that. That's the biggest thing. So we're working in multi agency configurations, task force configurations. And so, listen, you, you, get, you try to create this facade of this conspiracy because of a reporter and a deputy chief and blah, blah, blah. Hey, everyone's looking after their own. What is Chuck Phillips on? He wants like, yeah. Chuck Phillips. And the way, and the way the LA Times and people turned on Chuck Phillips, he would have loved to expose that. <laughs> Absolutely. And Chuck, yeah. Chuck Phillips was a hardworking, diligent reporter. And what, what does he want? He wants breaking news. He wants to have, you know, insider information. So if he develops relationships with people in the mm -hmm. you know, upper echelons of a police department like the LAPD, he's doing his job. He's trying to infiltrate so he can gather information for his story. And that's not unheard of. They, it, stuff leaks to the press all the time, right? Yeah, and yeah. Burkow, he's doing what you would expect an LAPD administrator to do, which is protect the department at all costs. And you go in and you want to have, a, you know, you want to anticipate a new stories. You want to anticipate bad press. You want to do all of those things. And so everybody's kind of playing their own game, their own chess game, in order to protect their own best interests. That's not conspiratorial. 
that's just people doing what people do in those positions. And, and Phil Ott know that. You know, so he can create this facade of oh, all this backdoor shit going on. Well, of course it is. That's what happens with reporters and, you know, administrators. There's all kinds of backdoor shit going on. Well, that doesn't mean there's a conspiracy. David Kinner to used to meet. Jeff Phillips and David Kinner used to meet. You try to control stuff. But, they, but just as um, things like that happen, Chuck Phillips still ran stories on Shug, written the house on the DA on the day of his probation hearing, yeah. which was a major hit against us, against uh, with the judge on the front of the LAP time. Shug Knight written DA that's con- controlling this probation uh, beach house. That was crazy. So we had all the connections and all this control over Chuck Phillips. You think he would have ran some shit like that? But he won't let us talk enough to ask him about that. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't let us ask that question. He knows, but he's good. He's a, a trait interrogator. He likes yeah. to control the rule. And he wouldn't go, I wasn't, I'm not full of COVID, as Greg Cating like to say. Reggie was full of COVID. I wasn't, I'm not full of COVID no more. And so you're not going to just call to me any type of way. I'm not no enemy anymore. <laughs> Those days are over. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you can, you can politely disagree, I suppose, but. I and, try to. I try. And Phil. And Phil is still professional in my mind. I still have no pressure. It's just his crack pack, money hungry, trying to keep a job, partner. Yeah. Don, who I have the problem with now. I always had a problem with it. I've been having a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with Nikki, but I don't like the way she's going to come calling me, talking about, I want to talk now. Huh? Put me on the phone. <laughs> I ain't chill, nigga. You know, my wife don't talk to me, so you think I won't let something. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, well the circus continues, I'll have, Greg. <laughs> I'll have to, yeah, well, I'll have to go back and uh, listen to your full, um, your full uh, live stream to see uh, what all was going on. I had to get a bit of Yeah, I hate that it had to heal in that way with Phil, to be honest, but because he uh, was gracious enough to come. But yeah. I think they had an agenda. The agenda started going by the wayside, and so they had a try to revert back to three years ago and it wasn't happening to me yeah yeah what was the uh i'm not on probation no more i'm not in a halfway house like i was when that last conversation took place so what was the nail on the top and what happened that i asked i well, asked don if they could exp- if their theory is accurate can you just explain to me ter- uh teresa swan's confession and don said you guys are clowns how dare you even ask that? You're a rat and hung up. <laughs> that was it. So your typical ad hominem deflection and just going to attack you instead of deal with the actual question. Pretty much, yeah. And we all probably had different agendas. John had this agenda that, you know, he wanted to clear up. My whole thing is, a, hey, you got me out there like I'm a snitch, this big informant. Nigga, this is the only thing I ever talked and cooperated with the police about. And whatever I said, I meant it. That's what was it, taking a person down to meet with him with Shiv's blessing and, you know, and then um, the, the situation with Omar Bradley with the, with the, the school fires when he was trying to get a kickback because I hated the mayor Compton at that time. Mm-hmm. So I got him put out of office, put up money to have Eric Perrin and beat him. He, he still hates me to this day behind it. Mm. But, hey, that's life. Yeah. yeah, I would just say that, you know, for anybody out there who's confused, because um, I'm sure this is all very confusing because it gets so convoluted, um, don't just accept anybody's um, um, claim without some type of documentation or some type of supporting evidence. Don't believe me unless I can say, here's the paperwork, here's what this person said, here's the recording, here's the case files. Um, don't believe Phil Carson unless he's showing you the case files. If Michael Robinson went down and had this, you know, productive meeting with Amir Mohammed, let's hear the recording from that, from that uh, interlude or from that uh, interaction. Let's see the reports from that interaction. Yeah. But they're going to hide behind the open investigation claim. You know, oh, it's open investigation. Bullshit. Listen, the FBI has already released their files on the case. And even though they're heavily redacted, Mm -hmm. that's their files. 
Yeah. So where is it? Where's the report within those files that talks about the success of this meeting between Michael Robinson and um, Amir Mohammed? And if you talk to Michael Robinson's actual handler, his informant handler, um, before Carson was involved, a guy named Tim Flaherty, now, Tim's going to tell you he's the most difficult informant he's ever managed in his career. That when he was off his meds, he was a delusional mess. And that, you know, he was your average, you know, um, street corner um, informant. Is that the know? same gentleman that supposedly, uh, I supposedly called to have Shiv meet, uh, to meet up at Tams? Is that the same guy? Which one was the one that I supposed to call this in prison to have Shiv come and meet me up at Tams? You remember that story that was out there? by uh that crazy fool the rapid idiot uh, michael corlin <laughs> when, he, when he, he put that out i forget which guy he's supposed to be no. i'll go call a guy that's in prison <laughs> to have him the call should and have him meet me uptown so we can do all of that man i'm just telling you these people and their theories is just crazy but, hey it God. is but you know, it's, uh, I, th I think a lot of people just find it. <laughs> and he said, yeah. you're the only one that believed the uh, murder rap. Nobody else on your, uh, on your task force believed that theory, that you are the only one that believed that. <laughs> and well, go interview him. You've seen Cowett. Cowett, you know, even though Cowett and I don't see eye to eye, he certainly um, agrees with what happened to both Biggie and uh, Tupac. And yeah. so far, and who did the murders, as does Lad. And as does every single other person in our task force. Of course, Dupree um, feels the same way. And uh, I even made him throw up his agent, his co part of uh, Jeff name, and you know, he just wanted to shoot over it. But, yeah. but, but you're the only one that believes it. <laughs> Nobody else believes it. <laughs> yeah. I never heard that, you know. I never, I never, I never heard, heard that, that before. <laughs> So, you know, people want to know why hasn't Amir Muhammad sued for defamation of character? But everybody don't sue. Everybody don't. Everybody don't want that in their lives. Reggie the only one stupid enough. I didn't want this shit in my life. I didn't care about. Greg Katie's went and brought a full blown case to an attorney for me, and they, and they wanted to take this case, and I was just like, you know what? I don't want to deal with that. You remember you went and said that, what was that, 2012, 2014? People just don't want to do that. When you went and met with the attorney you're talking about and laid out the case, was going to, the whole defamation case for me. Well, I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, the actual inner, you know, the, um, the delicacies of a defamation case. You know, first of all, there's time frames that are important, you know, because once it's something said if you don't if you don't file your lawsuit within a certain period of time you lose that opportunity and then you know there's all types of different you know um uh, dynamics some people don't have the money to go fight a defamation case and yeah, some of the people are what they call judgment proof good good point bro brother what you saying you sue and win and you don't have nothing <laughs> and some of these people like rj and all of them were what we call judgment proof Right, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you more money to, to, you know, to pursue that lawsuit, even when you win, than you'll ever get out of it. And so, it's very difficult sometimes for people who don't have, you know, the, you know, the, the people that don't have the necessary funds. They have to just suck it up and deal with it. And perhaps that's what was going on with the mirror. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but most likely he just wanted to stay out of the limelight. Stay out of the light, which he is not as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I've spoken to him several times. And he says the same thing. He's like, no, my wife wants me to stay as far away from this stupidity as possible. It does right. me no good to put myself in the middle of it because people are going to believe what they're going to believe regardless of what I have to say. <laughs> and, there, and there's some truth to that. You know, yeah. he could come out and declare his innocence all day long, but there's still going to be people, and you know how it is when you get in this, the world of, uh, of uh, podcasting or, 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 you know, doing what you guys do. It's still so full of vitriol and hatred that you can try your best to exonerate yourself with the best evidence available, and people are still going to 
you know, dig in their heels and call you a murderer. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because you know, Suge, Suge uh, blamed Snoop on one podcast, and there's now people online that say, there's a guy right now in our chat that says Snoop was the boss. Whatever he said went, and, you know, these guys. It, one person says one thing, and you'll find 10 or 15 people that end up believing it, which sucks. <laughs> because then anybody can say anything. But. Right, and you really can. Uh, now more than ever, you know, there's no consequences to making public allegations against people. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's just so socially irresponsible. And, um, and it's unfair. It's unfair to the people on the receiving end of those allegations who aren't in a position to really defend themselves. Yeah. How tired, Greg, are you of talking about this case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Greg, Greg is on the, uh, he's out of town right now, so I know it's a couple of hours, a few hours ahead of us. So. Oh, oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, so that's what you're <laughs> Oh, no, and I didn't mean that in a smart way because of your voice or your tone, Greg. I just mean in general for so many years, you got to keep going, coming back to this and talking about it. It's got to get redundant at some point. Like, I hate talking yeah. about it, and I, I didn't live it like you did, you know? Yeah, that's it's true, John. It does get really exhausting, but at the same time, you you feel obligated to continue to fight the good fight, you know, just because truth is important. And um, you know, in, if you're in a position to know things, um, regardless of whether people believe them, then you fight the good fight in order to defend that truth. So yeah, it's yeah, it does get a little. Um, discouraging sometimes but more often than not because there's so many good people who who do care about the truth and have put in the work to try to find the truth uh, that are very supportive and encouraging that's true yeah that's true. so that makes it it makes it worth make it worth it like, exactly yeah. yeah i agree yeah but yeah i'm in the beautiful state of texas i'm out in the middle of nowhere by a lake nice and uh <laughs> it's beautiful out here right now so well i hope you'll I hope you have your beautiful wife with you and not no, no uh, legal uh, uh, Mexican girl with you because uh, <laughs> because that crazy governor out there going to take you out of jail. <laughs> no, I'm traveling with my uh, my kid. Me and my son are on a road trip. We're just, nice. Okay. We've just been going across uh, state to state. It's taken us okay. like three weeks just to get from California to Damn. to Texas. Because it seems <laughs> you like keep stopping off, please. Hey, let me just see if this only happened to... If this only happened to my people, family, I didn't use the word white man too much today. I probably don't say that because that pissed my boy Phil off. But anyway, but uh, did you guys get pulled over any time? Because I, I never heard of a black family that went across that 10 freeway that did not get pulled over. I actually got stopped in Phoenix. <laughs> I tell you, that 10 is a mother, ain't it? <laughs> All right. Well, I, got, I got stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, at least I know it's just anybody with all the state plays getting pulled over on that 10. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. Appreciate you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Uh, yeah, appreciate you. you guys, man. I'll uh, look forward to listening to your live stream. And yeah, it's going to be up. Hopefully they uh, don't. I did cuss a little bit at the beginning, and uh, they usually put us and make John have to fight it. Uh, so if it's not up, yeah. If it's not up originally, then it'll be up definitely uh, later. But hopefully, we, we're gonna try to leave it up. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want people saying, "Oh, because he tore you up, Reggie." You know the trolls. That's why you pulled it down. Yeah. Whatever. No, we'll leave yeah, it up even cool. if it doesn't get monetized. Whatever. We'll just leave it. Hold oh, no, on. Your, your biggest fan want to come on the talk. Well, your second biggest fan, not AGTV, but the, the dude from Australia. Hold on. Oh, it's Nick. Nick, mate. God damn. God damn. Oh, Nick, Nick. You, you see me online? What the hell? That's why he's me, calling Rich. you, Rich. <laughs> Nick wants to get some right. time. Hey, Reggie, I'm coming in from a fan's point of view, not a pro-Reggie point of view. All right, go ahead. Can buddy. I ask two questions? Go ahead. So the donkey you had on tonight, oh, his God. wife, and no, Steve Carson. No, I'm not going to talk about him. I talked to him now. We ain't going to talk about him. We ain't going to talk about him. All I'm going to say, Reggie, is how come you can hear so much frustration in their voice when they were going to the Because their theory is getting killed. That's how you act That's when, right. when you're... When you're, uh, that's their stream, that's their money stream. I done been called, they done text me five times calling me all type Correct. of things. And, and they are pissed at me now. But hey, 
I didn't bash their channel. We bring it and expose you to it. They can go put up something tomorrow and talk shit about radio and they can do good. But, or they can go over another guy's channel. They have friends out there and deal with it. They can do it. But you're not going to talk to me like a boy, number one. Yeah, you, know, should, you know what, also, Reggie, they should have some more respect for you because a lot of the people that they're in with have actually accused you of a murder. And I'd like to ask Phil Carson, what would it be like for you, Phil, if you were accused of some bullshit that wasn't true? Yeah, well, so in fuck fairness Phil, to Phil, he did. Sorry, Reggie, I'm going to say fuck you, Phil, Phil Carson. In fairness to Phil, he didn't have to say that he doesn't believe that Reggie or Reggie Senior has anything to do with murder. Now, he tried to say he might have knew about it. That's opinionated. Yeah. Okay, you know, I don't know what I know or what I knew or what what how I was involved or, or complicit, but I know I ain't had nothing to do with, hey, go over there and kill Biggie Small or here's, some, here's this to don't do this. Mm -hmm. Nothing no, nothing to do with no shit like that. But And that's all I care about. Well, to me, from a fan's point of view, listening tonight is sounded like some Muppets that didn't know, but sort of have been proven wrong. That's what it sounded like from a fan's point of view. And you could hear the frustration. And the fact that he couldn't hang on the line, who cares? Man, well, if, Reg, if Reggie called me some fat white boy sitting in the Dodger dugout, that's not racism. That's Reggie, my boy. That ain't racist. He just wanted, Phil. He just wanted us to know he was sitting in Diggy, Diddy seats and stuff at the Dodger game this weekend. Yeah, I took his seats, John. <laughs> he was sitting right behind the home plate. I was like, oh, oh goddamn Nick. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Nick, this is our boy from the street. This is the gentleman that took uh, Greg and, and, and James out to Australia and, and put on a great show out there. And yeah. so. Appreciate some time to, in here. Yeah, I, just, I just wanted to sort of, you know, just cheat. We got for the fight this weekend, Nick. People that don't know, this is a guy that has a lot to do in the boxing world, and he'd be at every major, major fight. Who are you in California or in our town for we're, right we're, now? Which we're, we're in Las Vegas right now for Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora live on Saturday night. It's going to be a good fight. Tim Zhu, obviously, if he wins this fight, my fight, Terence Crawford, Reggie, uh, in, in in July, which will be really, really that's good. That's going to be a big fight. Yeah, that's yeah, it's going to be a really big fight. But uh, there's some big fights coming up. Canelo's fight in Mangua in May the 4th. And then, obviously, you got the return of Javante Tate Davis. Which is Davis. the one that's going to be in New York, right? Which one in New York? Uh, you got Dev, I was with Devin Haney last night. Yeah. And, uh, I'm catching up with him again tomorrow. He's going to be fighting Ryan Garcia, the, uh, the Mexican kid from Victorville, California. Oh, April the 20th in New York. Yeah, that's our boy, Mr. Nick Nine, my boxer expert. The guy and I'm still, I'm still, I'm still looking to fight J Mix. Uh, J Mix. <laughs> no, why would you want to beat up on a? Uh, I'm Netflix. gonna beat up on J Mix. Fuck you with J Mix, Reggie. Just a few uh, minutes. Nah, I don't mess with people with it, with bad drug, drug addictions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, John, you keep up your great work, man. You Thanks, guys are man. killing it. Appreciate and, it. Uh, yeah, Reggie, just, just wish I wouldn't Did you hear John? I guess I'm the racist. Uh, Mr. Knight called John the racist, but Reggie is the one that made the, the, the bad white man joke today, so I guess I'm the racist. Yeah, yeah. but to think, did you what I just said before, Reggie? If you said to me, oh, Nick, man, look at your white, that's not racism. That's because you're, if we're friends, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm not their friend, so that could be racism. Uh, no, no, I don't think that is racism. Uh, when, I'm yeah, from no, I mean. when I'm from Australia, racism is a little bit different than that, Reg. All right, well, I'm just looking well, out in Vegas here, Reg. I can't see Combs. I, I sort of put a tracker on him the other day in LA. I see where it is that he might be still in Miami. Well, where is he, John? Where's Combs at? We're hungry. Uh, he's somewhere shitting, shitting, shitting bricks right now. John, did Reggie tell you about Russell in Bali? Oh, I forgot about yes. that. Yeah. I did, oh, I did tell John, but I forgot we man. Oh, yeah, we forgot a, to cover that a today. A statement about that. Yeah. Yeah. About how he got so served his lawsuit. Those, yeah. I'll, I'll get off really quickly. But for you those can tell it. Go ahead and tell it. I didn't do a story. Okay. I should have did it. Yes. For those that don't know, a lot of people think Combs is heading to Antigua, and he might be heading to somewhere in the Bahamas. I'm going to say it here first. I'll bomb first. The best... Urban hip hop two part channel death row in the world. Combs ain't going there. Combs 
If I was a betting man, Sean Combs will be heading to Bali, Indonesia in a compound. I think Russell will already have it already set up for him. So all these people thinking that he's going that way, he'll probably go the other way down in Bali. Now, Russell, Russell Simmons has been out in Bali now for how long? Reg, probably five, six years? Yeah, at least. And I know people in Bali, Reggie, and you know people that I know people, and uh, some people saw Russell in Bali about three, four weeks oh, ago. Oh, no, he was there with some... food, yeah. we, we, no, well, I'm just saying, I just, he was there oh, with yeah. some people. He was there with some people that were... Some people? That looked <laughs> a little bit young. Oh. A <laughs> little bit young and some boys. Oh, and, uh, my God, yeah, so. don't give me food. I'm letting a, a white man talk about a black man like that. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, that's where I think Sh- John. That's where I think Sean. That's where I think Sean Combs is heading. Gotcha. We'll Guess who all be there. watching. He ain't tell y'all the main part of the story. Guess who was there? Who we believe was there uh, delivering tapes? Usher. Oh, oh, he did say Usher. Okay. No, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm no, just I didn't that. say that. John. Oh, okay. <laughs> he didn't say it. Get me sued, John. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Was he there or not? He was. Exactly. <laughs> we got the photos too. Exactly, but I, Reggie, Reggie's I'm scared, got the I'm scared to release it. I'm scared to release it, y'all. I love Usher, man. I want to go to an Usher concert. But man, I was so hurt when I saw that. Oh my god! Well, people, people, people are gonna look at it like this, right? And you guys are all up in America. I'm currently in America right now, but Usher performed at the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas. And three days later, you know, I mean, him and his uh, his wife, if, if she was with him. Yeah. It's an unusual place, John. I told you they were on a honeymoon. Mm. They were on a honeymoon. That's what I want to get. Okay. They, were on a they were on a honeymoon. But ah, what an unusual a place to go in the world, Reggie. Out of all the places in the world, you go to Bali, Indonesia, to uh, Russell Simmons' underground Bikram yoga compound. <laughs> mm. uh, they need the privacy. Puffy's going to need his privacy down there, too. <laughs> Yeah, well, you see how they got in. That guy was smart enough to get in on Russell and Serby. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Greg, Greg would know that. Is Greg still there? Greg? Hey, what's up? Yep. With that, do you think that subpoena will hold any uh, ground? Uh, refresh my memory. I, I've been... Oh, okay. I, I haven't been... Russell, really... Russell Simmons was over in um, a, a place that you can't extradite out of the country, uh, mm-hmm. Bali, Indonesia, Indonesia. Greg knows Bali. I was okay. there last month. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't tell nobody. That. Everybody, <laughs> don't tell anyone that. Yeah, I was telling nobody. <laughs> Shit. But anyway, oh no, they go. Oh no, oh, great. Oh, but anyway, oh, going over there. Oh, <laughs> oh, a person that gets third a for a, uh, a a lawsuit in the USA is that a valid service? Proof of service. I don't think so unless it would have have to have an international what do they call those um, oh. not not a red service not a red note um yeah so there's there's when you start doing that kind of stuff and you're getting you know international law enforcement involved like interpol and that type of stuff it all gets really complicated um i don't think that First of all, you got to actually appropriately serve the subpoena, which is very difficult. We think he did that. We, the, the guy acted like a guest, got in, and, 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 and walked up and served me. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's a question I, I'm going to have to uh, claim ignorance on. I don't know how that would work. I've never seen this one in Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But yeah, we'll see. A valid subpoena, then. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether he. Uh, you know whether he honors it or responds to it. You better go be like shit and get a hundred million dollar judgment. <laughs> yeah. Get a hundred million dollar judgment against you. <laughs> this is a uh, yeah. The, the whole thing has gotten really wild. I mean, it's interesting. Um, it's it's going to be really interesting to see how this whole thing plays out. Yeah. For those yeah. on the call, Greg Katie was not the person that told me that Russell was with some young minors in Bali. So, so I knew yeah. before Greg even went there. So, <laughs> yeah. But don't, if, if, Russell, if you keep slipping, Russell, I'm going to keep dipping. So. Uh, well, we ain't got no problems with Russell. I ain't going to let you have Russell. with Russell. Russell, Russell is Russell. Russell, the, Russell is actually a good dude, I think. Let's hope he don't come out. He was messing with kids. Then I have to talk about him. But other than that, I like Russell. I, I think if... 
if my memory serves me correct, because I don't know much about Russell Simmons. Obviously, his name's come up in you know over the years um, because I think the night that Biggie and Combs had gone to the Peterson. They had come from Simmons' house up in the hills. Isn't that right? Did you, anyone I think else it was another. I, no, I think it was Dilly yeah. Reed. I think it was Dilly Reed's house. Mm. Mm. It was, or Steve's so. house. It was either Dilly Reed or Steve Stout's house. Mm. Uh, okay. but, or, or, or for some reason, Dilly Reed keep popping in my head. Gosh, but man, where do where do I know Russell Simmons was? Because he was at the at the Pierce, wasn't he? I don't know. I don't think that. so, Greg. Don't think so. Yeah, sure? I never, heard, I never, no. never heard Russell under this bullshit. Hmm. I'm gonna have to ask Mike Dorsey. I think the part, the, the, I think Harvey Pierre, Reggie, that night was having a party up the back of Brentwood. I think. I don't know. I'm, uh, yeah, you ain't gonna get me caught up in no more stuff. <laughs> I'm, tired of, I'm tired of trashing people. I'm so tired of it. Cause I, you know, after I get trashed, you know, and I realize how these false accusations and stuff hurts, and 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 and, and, and it's crazy. Um, yeah, um, you know, I don't want to just start putting stuff on people no more. No, no, um, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not saying that. I think it was Steve South's house, though, to be honest. That they were yeah. going to, they were going to party at Steve South's house. Yeah, no, I'm talking about where they where they had come from. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, where they had come from before the uh, before the uh, party. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, but I, I just mean that as a, a point of interest, not that it means any kind of an indictment or reflect in any negative way. I'm just saying that there's clearly a pretty close association between them all on a professional level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know the music industry like you do, but... Um, I'm assuming there's probably... Oh, I was just a janitor. I don't know it either. <laughs> <laughs> right-way janitorial services. Yeah, right-way janitorial services. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, cool, y'all. Well, appreciate, appreciate y'all both coming in, and goddamn, Nick, you're going to get me in trouble with your Russell Simmons ballet story. Hey, Reggie, just remember one thing. If you are quick to slip up, in life with some bullshit you reckon they'd, they'd come for you and, and get it out there so I ain't, man I'm saying this on night eh? you can't get in trouble for it oh, he's a fucking mean. weirdo and so is Russell Simmons <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say alright stop talking about my black heroes <laughs> <laughs> that's what the black my black friends would tell me you up there letting them talk about your black boy ass like that Russell Simmons is an icon man well, okay, Reggie, why is he in Bali then? Because you, you two, you, you two, uh, what they me call too, Me too, me too, me too. No, me too, people, and shit. And he don't want to get food. <laughs> he don't want to. Yeah, but for what? Exactly. So there's, there's a lot more All right. the question there. But I get what you're saying. Russell, you, we, we, and I agree, we can't compare Russell to Combs. It's a completely different kettle of fish. I agree with that. Yeah. Man, did y'all see that one little girl? Y'all go pick, pick it up and check it out. I didn't see that. I saw you talking about it. Just don't tell that. I, I didn't see that. Yeah, we got to find it. We got to find it. Oh, matter of fact, I got to find it. But there's a young female on the line where she was talking about, she called, she's a white girl. She's about 14 years old. She said, uh, Puffy uh, adopted her. And I said, yeah. adopted dad. Anybody got that? A video, if y'all can please send it to Reginald or, or Reggie, right? Whatever my Instagram is, y'all know what it is. Yeah, well, Reggie, I've got <laughs> it actually. You got it? Yeah, yeah I've got it. And Puffy's got a white beard. He looked like he hadn't had a shower for three days. And that's when you, you know what I'm talking about? What this yeah, is? I know everything, Reggie, but yeah. Send it to John right quick so he can put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For everyone listening, Greg Katie's finished from all that bullshit years ago, but I still got combs on my radar. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Clear ass motherfucker. All right, Reg, you be good. John, you be good. Thanks, man. Greg. Did, did you send it to who you sent it to? I'll, I'll grab it to one of my files here. I'll all right, that. we'll put it later. I'll send it. I'll I'll it. We'll do an interview, a segment on it this week with, with John. 
Or Bo first. Yeah, it ain't good. And there's one with Justin too. The one with Justin wasn't good either, Reggie. All right, send me both of them. I need them. <laughs> oh, shit. You're going to get me <laughs> soon, Reggie. But anyway, what happened was <laughs> this little white girl was about to start saying, my name is, and I'm a Sagittarius, and... And, and Puffy had to stop her. <laughs> said, oh, no, no, not here. Don't say it here. Don't say it here. Hmm. Do y'all know what that means? Do y'all have any doubt with it, what she was about to do and what she was used to doing? That and might be too Eva for y'all. Baroni. Eva Baroni. Let's see. Let's see if I can find this video. It's on Twitter, too. It's, 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 it's out there. Okay. You get it, John. Trust me. Okay. I'll try to find it. All right, boys, I'm going to let you go. It's two hours later here in Texas. Yes, sir. Have okay, a good one, Thank Rick. you. All right, Dad. Uh, take care, everybody. Yeah. See you guys. See you, Rich. All right, buddy. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Uh, Ava. What's your other last name? Ava. Ava Veroni Combs? Yes, it's, it was breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that right there showed me this nigga is. <laughs> this nigga is guilty. <laughs> oh man, cause that's what you do when you. That's the floaters all over. That's what you do when you introducing people at parties and stuff like that. Oh my god, y'all just don't get it. So the same people, like, video yo, goes from. You know that it's old, right? It's from 2020. I don't know what when it was. Okay. This okay. Stuff is, well, no, just Nick was like, oh, his beard's white, but I just wanted to make sure people know. Um, let me ask you something real quick, Reggie, because somebody kept asking this question over and over in the chat, and I feel bad. Um, and you can choose to answer or not, because I don't know if it's a sneak question or not. I don't know. But they just said, what year did you uh, talk in Vegas about the club stuff? Let me read this right quick because I, I wasn't listening to you because I was reading somebody sending you a five dollar super chat. Oh, I'm so sorry, John. Okay, go ahead. Reggie has been uh, thoroughly vindicated on multiple occasions, and multiple times, and yet these jesters, yep. clowns, and clowns still try to discredit and try and try him as well. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. You know, hey, they shit it on Jesus Christ. Who am I? Right. In all fairness, though, we brought it on ourselves, bringing them on. In hindsight. We didn't know, we didn't know, know. but in hindsight. No, Johnson, you don't like confrontation. I just don't like pointless confrontation, you know? Well, confrontation is not nothing bad. You get to your point. Yeah. And so you got to learn how to just make your point. Fuck with everybody. Everybody has an agenda. Make your agenda. Control your narrative. Uh, Anyway. Yeah, so I, I just know if you would have told me we're doing a live stream with Phil Carson, I say cool. But if you would have said we're doing it with Phil Carson and Don, I would have said nope. <laughs> you know I would have done that. But this this girl asks what year, whatever year that Vegas stuff happened. I don't know if that I don't know what that means. Well, oh, you're talking about when 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 we went down to there. Yes. Uh, Jerry was in custody. So be like, you know, he was at the uh, was after the raids. So the 97-ish? No, 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 before that, it was after the race, so it had to be like 98, 99. Oh, yeah. oh, so way later, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Like I said, that, man, that, that is not an informant for you idiots. I know you trolls and understand, don't know. Security, general man, Reggie Connections, believe and cooperate and take you down to the police station and talk to you. And you hey, always have said in. that to me. You always have said that yeah, if, I, if I, somebody I, wants to talk, you, know, you should just go talk to them so they don't come kicking your door. Kicking your doors yeah, in. You've always said if, that to me. If, you, if it's a witness or something, not a suspect. Suspect, shut the fuck up. A lawyer. I love that scene where somebody kept saying, I think it was in the show The, walk, the Wire or something, where you just keep saying, a lawyer, mm. if you're a suspect. But if they just about something, you keep them off for you. You don't have them come knocking on your door. Mm. But y'all learn, y'all do it. But you know, most of the people that are saying something don't have opinion, ain't never been in any trouble. So hopefully, you can continue to be that way. But in the world of Reggie Wright, oh my God, <laughs> I've been around a lot. I've been around too much bullshit. Yeah. All right, so, cool. 
I guess it was Heron's chain. Where is Heron's chain? Ask his family. Ask JP. Watch on Vlad and you'll see. <laughs> well, yeah. But, well, yeah. but no, go ahead, Reggie. You tell him. You can tell him. Yeah, this is Ask JP. Heron Palmer, brother. His family has it. He had it on when he got shot. But where in the hell, how would John have it? John, John, you know his family? You think his family going to give you this chain? I've never That's talked to anybody Knight, in his family, it, ever. That Shug Knight that is bullshit. I keep telling y'all. Shug Knight likes to lie and exaggerate things. And I have never sold a chain for $40,000, oh, but if somebody wants to it. give me $40,000, I'll send you a chain. <laughs> did you even know Heron? Did, no, no, I never had. Never. You weren't even working with us with Heron before, no. before Heron got killed. So, P- Heron, Heron got killed in what, 97? 97, 98. I yeah, I didn't come until 98. I never, I never. Hard. And when I came, I didn't talk to anybody really outside of Ced, Cedric and uh, Jonathan you didn't Wilson. Talk to me, really? Yeah, I didn't even talk to you that much. I really didn't. Um, it was mostly Rocky, Cedric, Roy, and uh, Dogman a little bit, and Jonathan Wilson, the publicist. And that was pretty much it. Yeah. I didn't talk to those guys like that. I didn't even exactly. talk to Trey until years later. Exactly. So, so but yeah. So anyway, but that's the narrative. That's what the man wanted to push. But y'all hear our responses. And trust me, we're going to get responses. So y'all like tea? Y'all want, y'all want tea? We're going to play. Like I said, that this shit tapping, tapping at people around Ridge just to tap. But he know that man ain't had his own. Uh, he know that John ain't had no access to no Heron chain. And, and he still has the chain. He has his chain, and Reggie still has his chain. You know, because Reggie also was supposed to have been selling Tupac's chain. Don't y'all remember that? But we know, and we have evidence, who really yep. signed for somebody chains to get signed. Yep. If he wanted to play like that. Exactly. We know who he vouched for a chain that was made on the aftermarket, and he signed a notary paperwork saying that chain so he could get a little bit of money. Yeah, anyway. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. The cops, Rich. Yeah, I know. Hey, troll. Just like I said, your view counts just like people that, that want to hear the truth and knows the truth. So, hmm. I don't mind it. <laughs> oh, maybe he's saying the cops has it. You know, I only think the cops has it. I think they turned it over to his family. But, because I have seen... Anybody you want to know, anybody from the area, from the mob area, everybody know JP. And I'm sure JP will verify that he was wearing a chain or had the chain that his brother had at one time. Yeah, so, anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm tired. I've been out and about all day. Me and James did some segments over there on Vlad. It'll be coming out by this weekend. And I hope um, y'all enjoy them. Hope y'all go over there and support them. I appreciate all the uh, love that the ones of y'all that have uh, given us over the last couple of days on viewing our channel and viewing our stuff, and I hope y'all continue to do it. And, um, yeah, um, y'all go over and also view me and Jay's over there on Vlad. I appreciate that. And um, y'all get to see a guest appearance by John on the episode. Y'all be able to see that. And so, um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Anybody got any questions, last questions, send me a super chat, and I will <laughs> answer them right quick. <laughs> any questions that need to be answered, I don't even care. I think somebody said they only do super chats over $5. Oh, really? Yeah, somebody said that on Yeah, the roads. Oh, there's well, the road. road. <laughs> I don't even know how people use He's got a backup channel. Yeah, he got a backup channel. <laughs> but he can't even get three views on his main channel. <laughs> <laughs> I said he had, he put up a video for a whole day that had no views. I said, you don't even do your own shit. <laughs> he know it's on, he had like five views on his channel. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh. These dudes, I love these dudes with their bullshit. Mm-hmm. How is John racist? Uh, 
Because John don't like black folks. He hates black folks. He don't like nothing to do with black folks. Is that what you want to hear? That's the go-to word for black people, man. Whenever we don't agree with somebody, just like I just did. But I was being serious. I don't like how people talk. And, you know, y'all got to know how law enforcement are and cops are. Y'all know how they talk. You're not going to talk to Reggie motherfucker right like that. <laughs> She's right. Ain't, ain't going to take it like that. Y'all want people to bow down and all of that. That ain't me. That ain't me. I'm not scared of no motherfucking body. Police, gang members, gangsters. Well, my mom and my daddy and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Only three people to talk shit to Reggie motherfucker. Hey. <laughs> I don't lie to anybody else. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right. I'm tired of preaching. Like I said, I've been running my mouth all day. Are you going to drink uh, whack 100? Yes, you know I am. But, you know, that's a whack opinion. I ain't got no problem with whack. If you going to say I'm with my feelings or whatever, yeah. I'm not a nigga that like the word in my feelings or so. So, you know, I'm going to clap. I'm going to clap. But he's still my nigga. There's no black people. There is no black people, okay? Shit tapping. Shit ain't saying shit about me, you motherfucking right. <laughs> that king yeah. man shit and all of that. Hell, you talking about Dre and Snoop. I don't do concerts or do shows. But yeah, he may be tapping when he tapping at people around me. So I may have to give you that. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. We will see. We shall see. I don't think you will, though. I really don't. Because I see my boy Art and Gene got a video going over there for about five, six hundred thousand just talking shit. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I would break that record if that nigga ever tap at me. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> He's going first.